You ready? You're ready. Okay. Is everybody ready? Yep. yep. Okay. Uh, I'd like to call this uh, the June 2nd meeting of the Yellow Springs Village Council to order. Judy, would you please call the roll? Yes. Wintrow. Yes. Sims. Here. Housh. Here. McQueen. Here. Lori Askland is absent this evening. Also present is Interim Village Manager Kent Bristol and Officer Josh Knapp. And Melissa will be here. Melissa will should be here later. Okay, the great. finance director. Okay. Um, first is announcements. I'll start out with a couple. First of all, we got a rather large check from <laughs> um, Green County Department of Development for it's a check for twenty-two thousand dollars to complete some um, ADA um, uh, sidewalk ramps. So that's part of a grant request we put in last year, and we're um, that work is in the budget for this year, right? For the summer, Kent, the sidewalk ramps. Yes. So we're appreciative of the Green County Department of Development for that grant. It was uh, community development block grant money, so it will definitely help. Uh, Brian and I both went to receive the check in a um, <laughs> formal presentation from the Green County Commissioners. So. Um, let's see the um, out on the if, if folks weren't around yesterday afternoon the um, bronze symposium was unveiled and one of those is on village property on the short wall on Dayton Street so there are four installations and they're all incredible so pick up one of these maps and it talks about the artists and and do the tour it's really an amazing thing so um, and yes. actually since we're talking about sculpture the uh, Ohio sculpture that Richard Lapides and Maureen Lynch donated that went through public art commission was also installed and that's right across the street from Mills Lawn in front of the admin building also looks really great terrific any other announcements from council staff Actually, I just, I will put in one more. Uh, the Yellow Springs Kids Playhouse, you may know, is celebrating their 20th anniversary, and they're having a picnic this Saturday at the Antioch Amphitheater. Everyone's welcome. And it's the last time you'll see Pierre Nagley's mural of the bayou that we had last summer. So if you want to check that out, come on up from 11 to 1. Um, next is a review of the minutes of the May 5th meeting. Um, page one, page two, page three, page four, <coughs> page five, and page six. Motion for approval, please. So moved. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, next on the agenda is a review of the agenda um, to decide if there are any items, any th as if there's anything we want to move around, um, anything we want to add or remove from the agenda. Um, I would like to request, um, I will be recusing myself from resolution 2014-26, so I would like to ask that um, we move that to the last piece of legislation um, so that I don't have to come in and out during legislation. Um, let's see, there was one other item. Well, there's a couple of items in the petitions and communications that um, I'm, there's at least one that I'm gonna ask that be moved into um, a short discussion. Um, and um, so unless anybody has anything else about the agenda. I, well, I was just gonna, is it 2014-26 or 2014-26? 15. 2014-26. The Cemetery Street? Yeah, the Cemetery, cemetery Street. Yeah, okay. Cemetery Street, East Limestone. Okay. Th there are several um, things in the petition and communication, some of which uh, council needs to approve. Right, yes, yeah, and that's so. Um, so and, and, and there are others that I'd like to at least briefly address. Okay, well, let's... 
usually Lori goes through the, the petitions and communications. I'll, I'll go through it briefly if that's okay. Um, the first is a letter that I wrote in support of. Are, um, we, do, are we done with we're agenda? Done. Did you want to change yeah, the agenda? Yeah, actually, I'd like to add to new business uh, the approval of a few new HRC members okay. that we got resumes and letters of intent for. Sorry. Okay. <coughs> Okay. Um, so the first is a letter um, that I wrote in support of the what's the what's that project? Um, SpringsNet. Is yes. That in support of SpringsNet for a grant, um, Marianne McQueen wrote a letter, and that's one of the ones that she's referencing um, related to Senate Bill 310, which is um, the attempt to um, roll back the energy um, uh, the energy um, regulations that the state passed back in 2008 I thought the ex that the letter was excellent I don't personally I don't know that we need to add it to the agenda other than I make a motion that we send that letter I think it's already passed no or it still goes to Kasich yeah has, oh. it, it went signed. through I think okay. I think the house or the Senate signed. yeah Mm -hmm. But it's going to go to Kasich. So I think the letter was specifically to Kasich, wasn't it? Yes. yes. Marianne, so I don't know that we're going to have much of a chance, but we might as well get our, get our voice in there. So do Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Um, and the, the other big one um, for consideration for the agenda is um, Vicki Hennessy provided information on the Mosquito Information Project that we undertook last year um, with Antioch College. I don't want to go into a lot of detail because I'm not the expert. She's here. I don't want to do it. I would like to add it um, if we're if if council is willing to um, new business if mm -hmm. to talk to discuss that. Okay. Um, there's information about the village manager hiring process that we will talk about later. Um, there is a letter from Janice Jones about um, concerns about mowing, um, and I don't recall exactly where that was. Do you, does anybody have that? Yeah. So this is the uh, letter about um, currently, according to the letter, uh, mowing uh, requests go out on July 1st, and she's asking it to be moved earlier okay. because by midsummer. The grass has grown quite a bit. And I believe we actually may have had a letter on our yes. desk related yeah, to we the had same a second thing. Letter. Is right. that something I would like to turn over to ask Kent to respond to, to do a little bit of research on? Um, next was a stop sign request from John Hempfling for the intersection of High Street and Herman. Uh, next is a petition from Brian Harris for um, keeping the restrooms at the train station open 24-7. Um, um, so I'd like for us to have some discussion about that. Okay. Either here or under. Um, we could. Let's just go ahead and put it under new business. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, the Mary, uh, Mary Ann McQueen, a, a request that we hear um, next at the next meeting I believe from Ellie Ferguson from Home Inc about a housing study <laughs> which yeah which I think would be great I would like to just go ahead and say yes let's put Ellie on the mm -hmm. on the agenda um, and you're the the um, glass farm that was basically more for information purposes right well it was um, but I also yeah I wanted to alert council that uh, this beautiful wetlands has been developing on the glass farm in the detention area, which has conservation zoning. And I, I think that it's time, uh, since there's a discussion about open space has come to, you know, in, in the community, um, and as we're considering becoming denser, I think it means that our public lands and the open space that we have are becoming more important. And I'd like for the community to start thinking about are there ways that we would like to enhance all of our parks in particular? And in this case, uh, my particular um, passion about beavers <laughs> ha has uh, 
gotten me interested in this particular mm -hmm. area. And while they are amazing creatures, they can also create some difficulties. So I was just requesting that staff do the minimum necessary to keep the water flowing to the degree it needs to flow while we look into get some more information on is it possible to have beavers be there and have that have that area be Ken, have naturalized. you had an opportunity to talk with staff about about that situation yes uh, Jason has asked me several times if he could remove the dam <laughs> and I did finally say that he could make a small breach to let the water level come down but um, I think Mary Ann has found a way that we can accommodate both the people well, and the beavers. Okay, well, I, I, well, I guess what I'd like to suggest, because I, I don't feel ready, that's a pretty big topic to address tonight, so maybe it's something we look yeah, to put on no, the no, agenda no. for an upcoming Yeah, and I'll, I'll provide more information. But there is another area, Kent, that probably should be removed, too, which I could show that John Eastman identified. Um, and we got a letter from Bob Barkus, actually not Bob Barker. <laughs> <laughs> the price is right. The down. price is right. Yeah. Um, about downtown busking again, we're we're getting a lot of feedback and a lot of input on concerns from downtown business owners about the um, loudness and the the amplification of downtown music. <coughs> Um, Roy Qualls has a request for and a sample letter um, request that council send a letter to Mike Turner um, asking him to support legislation um, related to um, the Baha'is in Iran um, I, I don't know I actually I think I have a question I'd like to put that on a future agenda item as a future agenda item um, to talk to get a little bit more information from Roy about unless somebody is is ready to support that we can we can add that later um, let's see Green I mean Hill. I would support it to just go ahead and send it yeah. I don't see a reason not to do that Th does anyone else I don't have any objections it's um, yeah Roy is here if we Roy oh Roy two minutes seriously two minutes <laughs> and maybe speak to timing of the letter as well and yeah, does it need to be sent immediately? Okay, uh, I'm Roy Qualls. I'm the chairman of the Baha'i, uh, the Spiritual Assembly of the Baha'is of Yellow Springs. And uh, I think the timing's a little sensitive because um, we're trying to get uh, co-sponsors for that bill in the House of Representatives um, <clears throat> before it comes up for a vote. And it's the degree of co-sponsorship that really sends the message to the Iranian regime. Uh, I don't know why Representative Turner hasn't uh, signed on yet, um, and uh, there was a bipartisan uh, companion piece passed as the last piece of legislation from the U.S. Senate. Right. So it's um, it's a pretty important thing, and um, we, we hope that the council will uh, encourage Representative Turner to uh, sign on forthwith. Okay. So is, does, is council, I mean, the sample letter seemed fine. Is, are we? Yeah, I thought the letter was good. Okay. Um, and certainly the Baha'i community is an is, uh, important part of uh, the Yellow Springs community, so. Thanks, Roy. Thanks, okay. Roy. Thank you. So what I'm hearing is that we will send the letter. I, Judy, did, did you send it electronically, Roy? Yes. I've okay. got it. I have it actually. And so you can, go, so. okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, John Hudson, there was a letter from John Hudson and Debbie Henderson um, saying that they didn't support um, really any expenditure of funds, I believe, on the Ellis Park um, Bridge. And then I don't know what the Greene County Department of Development infrastructure projects. Do you know what that was? This was announcing uh, some of the new projects okay. that are being funded. We are not on that list. Yeah. Okay. I, can I ask you a question about the stop sign request just because I had a question when I received it can that go over to staff I would say so the staff and the PD I would I would say um, okay. so we're through all that um, oh I do have we got a, a monthly report from the mayor and mm -hmm. I think also from the police I'm, well that's yeah that's in the um, staff packets at any rate 
to me it would be more helpful to have it quarterly than monthly and also to have it compare previous years because getting a monthly report when there's nothing to compare it to right. doesn't mean much. Is that something you do, Melissa, or does the mayor's office do that? June does that. June, June does that. Uh, no, you, you, <laughs> saw the, you, you saw the comparison at the bottom, right, between oh. from, uh, from this year and last year. I mean, okay. I, th I think it's a report that they do for themselves and they give it to us for information. I don't, yeah. I think that that's really, it, it's okay. an informational okay. piece from them to us. So Stand it's probably right. not our right to okay. ask for it to be changed. Um, oh, one more thing I did want to add to very briefly to the new businesses, um, a request for some, a small amount of funding for um, an event that's coming up. Okay. Um, so now we'll move on to um, public hearings and legislation. Um, first is Ordinance 2014-13, approving a summer sewer rate adjustment for registered residents. All right, this is an ordinance amending section 1048.05 service charges of chapter 1048 sewers and sewage of section 10 streets, utilities, and public services of the codified ordinances of the village of Yellow Springs, providing the op option of special reduced seasonal rates for sewer services for residents whose water use during summer months is greater than usual due to gardening or lawn watering. Whereas some residents of the village consume greater amounts of water than usual during summer months due to their use of water for gardening or watering lawns. And whereas since user charges for sewer service are based on metered water use and water applied to lawns and gardens does not enter the sewer system, this system for calculating sewer charges is inequitable. Now therefore the Council of Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio hereby ordains that section one to reduce the inequity cited above. Residential customers who will engage in landscape or garden watering may at their option apply annually to participate in an alternative means of calculating their village utility bills. Section 2, a new subsection 1048.05G shall be added to read as follows. For those residents who apply and are accepted, the Village Utility Billing Office will use that customer's water use in the preceding December, January, and February as a baseline, then compare it to their use for the following June, July, and August. Any summer use that reflects higher consumption in summer months will be deducted from that customer's sewer charges. The adjustment will be made in September, October, or November, depending on which bill month's bill is based on that customer's actual meter reading. Section 3, the policies for instituting and administering this program, e.g. deadline to apply for participation, shall be promulgated by the Village Finance Director. Section 4, this ordinance shall take effect and be enforced from and after the earliest date permitted by law. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Uh, Kent, would you um, please just explain further or just... Well, we're just formalizing a practice we actually adopted a few years ago. And I just got, was uncomfortable that we were giving people discounts without any legal basis for doing it. So we're just putting it into, into the code so it's, uh, so I don't, have to, I don't have to go to jail when the next audit happens. <laughs> and Kent, has the application for this summer already been passed? Or can people, can oh, resident? I think people can apply anytime. It's till August. Yes, until August. Okay. Until August. Yep. It's on the front page of the uh, YSO.com. Right. And, and I do believe that the decision was made, staff requested that it be a process that every year people have to, to sign up. So if you did sign up in 2013, you want the discount again in 2014, you need to sign up every year. Mm -hmm. Um, this is just the first reading. This is, yeah, this isn't an emergency. Any other comments from council? Comments from citizens? Judy will take a vote. Yes. Sims? Yes. McQueen? Yes. Housh? Yep. Wintrow? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, next is ordinance 2014-14, accepting a utility easement across the property of Family Choices Real Estate, LLC. Okay, whereas the construction of a new hotel at the northeast intersection of Xenia Avenue and Limestone Street requires water service to the site, and whereas the nearest location capable of providing service adequate to the demands likely to be imposed by the new hotel is the water line directly west of the hotel on South Walnut Street, and whereas the most direct and efficient path to connect the water line with the hotel requires crossing the land of Family Choices Real Estate, LLC, and whereas Family Choices Real Estate, LLC, has kindly agreed to grant the necessary easement to the village, now therefore the Council of the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, does hereby ordain that. Section 1, the village hereby accepts the utility easement preferred by Family Choices Real Estate, LLC from the date the easement was signed. Section 2, a copy of the easement is attached here to and incorporated in this ordinance by reference. <clears throat> Section 3, the village relays its thanks and appreciation to Family Choices Real Estate, LLC for their cooperation and assistance in a project likely to be of mutual benefit to them and the village. 
Section 4, this ordinance shall take effect and be enforced 30 days following its adoption. Uh, can I get a motion, please? So moved. Second. And I will say that um, I'm going to go ahead and abstain from this vote also since it's about, it's indirectly related to the hotel property. Um, I just, I just won't, I'm not going to recuse myself, but I won't, I will abstain. Um, Kent, can you take this over? No, they're, they're building a new hotel. It'll impose demands of its own simply for regular use, but it also has to meet certain fire code requirements. And the only practical way to do that here was to uh, go to Walnut, the Walnut Street water line, and the funeral home was kind enough to say we could cross their property and do it by the shortest possible route. So uh, that's what we're doing. It'll, it'll save us money. It'll make it a more effective project. Comments? No. Citizen comments? Judy, would you please call the roll? Yes, McQueen. Yes. Sims. Yes. Ausch. Yes. All right. Uh, next is the uh, first reading of ordinance 2014-15, uh, approving the final subdivision plat for the Center for Business and Education. And it probably should be added that this is being read as an emergency. This is being proposed as an emergency. Is that? It is. And that's that's correct. It should be in the title. It is noted in Section 3. Um, and it, when it runs the second time and when it is read the second time, it will state that it's an emergency just to make that correction. But it will receive two readings okay. as an emergency so that it goes into effect immediately after the second reading. OK. Whereas Community Resources, a.k.a. Education Village, has proposed a subdivision plan for the property known as the Center for Business and Education, and whereas said plan has been reviewed in both preliminary and final form and approved by the Yellow Springs Planning Commission, and whereas approval by Village Council is required for work on the subject site to go forward, now therefore the Council of the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, hereby ordains that. Section 1, having reviewed the scrutiny and actions of Planning Commission, this Council hereby approves the final plat here attached as Exhibit A, presented for their review. Section 2, this final plat is approved subject to the conditions as contained in the Planning Commission minutes of May 27, 2014, as directed by Planning Commission as part of their oversight. Section 3, this ordinance is hereby declared to be an emergency measure immediately necessary to preserve the public interest and for the health, safety, and welfare of the citizens of the village, such emergency being the need for economic development to sustain the income tax base. Wherefore, this ordinance shall be in effect immediately upon its adoption by council. Thank you. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay. Um, Kent, would you um, explain the process that went before Planning Commission and exactly what, uh, what we're doing here? We proposed several months ago <coughs> to borrow money to finance construction of the infrastructure on the Center for Business and Education. And there are people in the community who are opposed to that. And they pointed out accurately, as it turns out, that we had not followed our own procedures, that it required um, approval by the Planning Commission and approval by Council of a plan um, before the thing should, before it should proceed. And so uh, we're not ready to do a plan that meets the requirements of a planned unit development. That would require that we have end users in, in mind, that we could s define where the buildings would be and how big they would be and what they would look like and what kind of landscaping we would need and parking requirements and all. We're not anywhere near that. And so our planner suggested as a simpler process that if we installed the street, it would de facto create three separate parcels of land, and therefore it was a subdivision, and that we should ask to have it approved as a subdivision. And so that's the path we're taking. Um, and so really all this is is approving the road layout and the resulting three uh, parcels of property. Um, I can't think of anything else. Okay. Um, any comments, questions from council? Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, I, I will vote in favor of this, but um, I also noticed that it's being done as an emergency ordinance in order to bring forward the possibility of funding. Mm -hmm. And I, I would just like to say and let people know that my thinking has shifted on funding at this point, 
and I would be I'm not asking council to do this right now but I would be I would propose that we table the motion for funding and I have a number of reasons and I'll very quickly say why the first thing that started concerning me was our, the, our deficit budget and the idea of putting eighty thousand dollars a year for some unknown period of time uh, in the deficit but but as I've been thinking about it I think that um, there's more work that needs to be done I'd like to I'd like the village to decide whether we are going to have a designated CIC uh, and whether we're going to have staff be able to uh, be involved in this because I think that the development of the Center for Business and Education will take a considerable amount of time and effort um, I also would like to see an economic development plan really approved and put forward by the, the village and I'd like the new manager to be on board and have a chance to get up to speed before we move forward with this um, and, and I really would prefer not to see a referendum at this time I just don't feel that it would be health healthy for the community so I'm just saying that so people know where my thinking is okay. and just for clarification my, my intent or my hope was that when this is brought back for second reading in two weeks that I will also bring a, an ordinance to do the financing not because I intend to do it right away but because there are people who want to subject it to a referendum and we'd like to get it done as quickly as possible so they have enough time to meet the August deadline for getting a petition into the Board of Elections. Yes, I, I'm aware I'd like of that. to separate these two discussions because I think <coughs> that they are two completely separate discussions and it's going to get confusing. I mean, we have a single piece of legislation before us. The problem is, is we don't really have an agenda item about the CBE, about this next piece of legislation. It was in, it was in Kent's manager's report um, so I don't know if, if we if we want to just go ahead and, and talk about this vote on this legislation I, and I don't even want to mix up another discussion in in with legislation so I think we are just going to need to add it I mean if if council wants to entertain the um, Kent's recommendation that we bring the financing ordinance to the next meeting we need to add it to the agenda is that is everybody in agreement with that to add it to the agenda oh yeah, I, okay. yeah, yeah. and then if if we were able if the majority voted to table it that would I mean we'd bring it for forward and then table it or can we just vote let's to talk, table can it? we talk about it can we do that decide when we actually put it okay let's put it in we'll put it in that would be an old business um, Um, okay, so so moving back to the subdivision plat um, for the Center for Business and Education, um, has legal counsel reviewed the subdivision, reviewed the legislation? Yes. Okay. Sure, yes. Okay. I gave that to Chris to. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, it's my understanding, as Kent said, it is basically a, a housekeeping measure that should have been done a couple of years ago that in my view our staff allowed to get past us um, the the project was coming to um, planning commission came to planning commission for review several times and the final step of approving the plan was never done um, I would say I would suggest by oversight not by any other um, any other reason so um, I've talked to, to I, I actually did talk to Chris about it I don't believe that there is any anything this is not committing approving this particular piece of legislation is not committing us to the funding it's just committing to the subdivision the village um, actually owns about 11 acres of the parcel um, of, of the land um, where the road will go um, and in some respects is simply um, protects our interests in that in that this will be subdivided in a way that shows the road shows the plan so I I don't know that that um, um, and, and it moves the process forward again I mean we're we'll we will have another reading next week that will be the final reading and that will be the reading that determines whether this is approved or not um, so um, and then I, just maybe to add to that Ken is it also correct that this establishes the right-of-ways yes okay um, 
so let's just let's open up the floor any other before I open up the floor to citizens any other comments from council here no, no? okay um, citizen um, comments about this legislation okay. yeah you have to come up Does this uh, zoning your name, please. yeah Matt Carson? Does this zoning measure um, obligate us to build the road and for the village to uh, finance the building of the road? No, it doesn't. Okay, and it's yeah. not a zoning; it's it's a subdivision plat. Okay. Um, the other question I have is: Is this actually an emergency, or is this something that should be passed procedurally like normally? Well, so just to understand, an emergency reading, it, it the the point of an emergency is that it passes immediately it doesn't have a 30-day period we are actually going to do two readings which is typical usually when we do an emergency reading and it is a true emergency we only have one reading and then it immediately goes into effect Kent made the decision on this one that we would have two readings so that we have two opportunities for count or for citizens to have input and for council to discuss it, but that it would go into effect immediately. Again, this is this is with the thinking that if we are trying to move forward um, on um, a referendum, on the financing on a referendum, I mean we're kind of thinking ahead. Um, at this point, we, we're going to have two readings. We can decide at the next reading that we, that we might choose for it not to be an emergency. We could, we could choose to remove the emergency language. So at this point, we're going to have two readings. And um, so, I mean, is it a true emergency um, in that, you know, something is going to stop if we don't pass it? No. But there are procedural reasons that we're reading as an emergency. Right. And it's, an it's my understanding from uh, reading the town charter that the only reasons that we can pass emergency ordinances are for uh, continuation of normal services such as you know water electricity etc or if it's in public interest and this is justified with a public interest um, argument particularly tax rates but that doesn't really seem like an emergency thing so I don't think that it's necessarily in the spirit of uh, you know, the law it might be within the letter but it's not within the spirit so thank you thank you any other comments Uh, hi, I'm Dan Reyes. I, I followed some of this when it was in planning, and uh, it's a curious item in, in, in many regards that the village is playing a, a, a number of roles in this. Uh, as, as I understand it, and unless this changed in the last reading in planning, uh, the village is a co-applicant for this legislation. Uh, so it's at once reviewing and uh, stepping into the role of a property owner uh, through this legislation. Uh, I, I guess, Karen, you answered a question uh, that came from the previous um, commentary about the intent of this, and uh, I, I, I'll take that as, um, as what you say it is, but I, I am concerned about the language of the legislation as it reads presently, and it could be, uh, it seems to me, easily improved to make better clarity of what you yourself were saying uh, about this legislation being uh, essentially no guarantee or promise to either provide funding or perform work on the part of the village but rather to provide the availability of this land for such use uh, and, and I'd be happy to offer you the language to do that if you'd like to make that clear with this legislation uh, it could be modifying simply the last whereas uh, of the declaration I, I, we can we can we can review this maybe run it by legal counsel again I you know if something's not saying yeah. it's for something I don't know why we would need to add language to say it's not for that well um, taking possession in some case it seems to me I, I, I don't have the experience in this jurisdiction but I have heard of cases where a, a similar sort of move of taking possession of, of approving <laughs> a plan that has only one possible interpretation being interpreted as a promise and uh, a, a municipality being, can be held to that. Now, maybe ultimately you will want to fulfill that promise, but that's other legislation. Right. And I agree with you about keeping these two separate. So to at least make it perfectly clear with this piece. I, I will, I, I, what I plan to do, what I was going to ask Kent to do was 
um, maybe run this piece of legislation a second time by legal counsel. And since you brought that up, I, I, would, a I would ask that we do that. And if there are any changes, then we'll bring that in the next, um, to the next meeting. Okay. Thank you. Jerry? Uh, Jerry Sutton, I'm with CR and I support the legislation. In December 2012, uh, Community Resources conveyed this right away to the village. And this I take is simply bringing that to effect to fruition by subdividing the property, taking that that is conveyed to the village and carving it out from the rest of it. Yes, thanks. Any other comments? Seeing and hearing none, I'll bring it back to council table for a roll call. Sims. Yes. McQueen. Yes. Ouch. Yes. Wintrop. Yes. Um, next is uh, resolution 2014. Dash 24, approving emergency expenditure, expenditure for water plant filter replacement. Okay, whereas filter number three at the water treatment plant has failed and needs to be repaired, and whereas said failure while not impairing the village's normal capacity to meet the need for water, does somewhat compromise the ability to cope with unforeseen large demands, as might be the case in the event of a major fire or similar occurrence, and whereas prudence dictates that prompt action is required under the circumstances, now therefore the Council of the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, does hereby resolve that. Section 1. The manager and staff of the village are hereby authorized and directed to act as promptly as possible to return water plant filter number 3 to full service. Section 2. In order to accomplish the aforesaid action as expeditiously as possible, the usual procedural requirements for purchasing and making expenditures on this scale are hereby waived. Section 3, the issuance of purchase orders in the amount of $15,000 to Severn Trent Services for required repair parts and in the amount of $13,400 to Artesian of Pioneer for the labor to install the parts and complete the repairs are hereby approved. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay. Um, this is pretty self-explanatory. Um, Kent, do you have a, um, a schedule? Do we have a schedule yet? The... Uh, Artesian of Pioneer has already been here to remove the damaged parts and do the preparation. We're waiting for the parts to arrive from Severn Trent, and I don't have a, a clear, fixed idea when that's going to happen soon. Okay. But, <clears throat> and how long will the repair? The actual repair itself will not take more than a few days. Okay. And I, I have, ju I just noticed. Um, uh, some comments or heard some comments from folks about there being brown water in some areas um, My understanding is that there is nothing about the this damaged filter that is currently causing any problems with our water That should be the case a and I did ask Ruth Ann um, what the problem might be and I believe that the fire department was doing fire flow tests at the college at Antioch College last week or this weekend and that might be the cause for anybody that might be having brown water or have had brown water that could be the cause we don't know for sure or at least that's all I know now is did Joe or anybody else mention that there is a current situation of brown water <coughs> no? okay. first I've heard of it. Um, any comments or questions about the repair work to be done uh, citizen comments and questions bring it back to the table um, all those in favor signify by saying aye Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, next, uh, reading of resolution 2014-25, approving an employment agreement for village manager, for the village manager position. Uh, um, are we? <laughs> I can just kind of go <coughs> at each blank, or you could do your discussion ahead of time. Um, um, yeah, maybe we should do that and have our discussion. Yeah, that's a good idea. So. Um, <laughs> For those of you, and a lot of you sitting here, who have been involved through this process of, of choosing a new village manager, um, and it, it's it was an excellent process. We had we had a good consultant who did um, a, a lot of upfront legwork to get 61 candidates, um, which was excellent. I think it's more than there are a lot of manager positions open right now, and I think it's the most candidates that came forward. So we felt really lucky. We had a lot of great candidates. 
Um, we worked with the consultant to um, kind of break it down to like the final 15. Then we worked with our citizens committee. We had, I'm going to turn it over to Brian in a minute to get a little bit more specific about the citizens committee. But w we just had um, great input from citizens in the citizen committee, citizens providing questions. Um, last week we had two days, these folks went through two days of intense questioning and, and appearance before public, um, the public process with the, with the um, citizens in the, um, in the gym. And um, I, they, they all came through it you know, very well and we had, um, um, I think at the end of the day though, we, um, we had great citizen input and at the end of the day, okay, should I, do you want to talk about the process more or should we and um, maybe maybe a couple more things. Uh, first of all, uh, you're not allowed to say. I won't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> gotta leave that privilege to you. Um, uh, yeah, I, I did want to, on behalf of all of council, thank the citizen committee. Uh, we had eight people that worked really hard, and uh, you know, not only did they sit in the first round of interviews with the top five candidates with us and ask great questions, but they also essentially planned and, and uh, peopled the uh, public forum, which we felt really good about the feedback. Uh, we got a lot of very de detailed feedback from the public forum. We had, I counted over 40 people that, uh, villagers that participated in the small group sessions at Emporium, at Dino's, at Sunrise. Uh, we had a lot of great tours with the businesses. Antioch College opened their dining hall. Uh, we were also at, uh, at Antioch University. Um, and it, it was just really amazing how much feedback we got from a lot of different camps. Uh, and uh, we seem to see uh, a lot of similarity in the feedback. Um, and so maybe that's why I will turn it back over to Karen. And so at the end of the day, so we had our interviews, I think starting at about two o'clock in the afternoon, council had their interviews, and then we went into an exec executive session afterwards. At that point, we had all of the citizen input. We had a great deal of staff input. They spent the first day with staff and, and our, our solicitor, and then the second day really more with citizens. And so we had an opportunity to review all of that information. And um, council felt very positive in um, offering the job to Patty Bates. And um, we um, negotiated, our, our solicitor negotiated a contract with Patty, and we have come to terms. And um, she will be starting, we hope, in, um, on July 7th. So. Um, it was it was it was one of these things as we said it, it was a marathon two days and and what I was so impressed with Patty because she was our last interview on Friday and if this was you know she left I think at six o'clock on Friday she ended the day and the whole two-day period stronger than she started and and she her energy grew and her excitement grew and her understanding of the community grew and we all just really started to see that there was there was such an honesty and such a um, um, just a very straightforwardness with her that we felt so comfortable with and um, so and, and citizens also felt very positive about about Patty too we got a lot of very positive input so and um, Patty was uh, the staff's top choice yes so she brings she brings a lot of a lot of experience in, in different arenas and and I think a great demeanor that will um, will serve us all well so I look forward to working with her um, and as I said she will start I believe July 7th I think there will be some transition discussions being discussed poor Kent um, <laughs> has been has been waiting for his re-retirement date and I think it keeps getting extended out but he uh, he will he will be able to be with us until that time mm -hmm. so I I'd like to say okay. one you know we, we kind of joke about you know the community being divided and we can never agree and so forth but uh, since I've been on council this is the first time where we had a very high percentage of everyone agreeing on the same uh, individual. So uh, 
I'm looking forward to it, and I know you folks are looking forward to uh, Patty coming in and so forth. And all I'm asking is that the enthusiasm that we showed in picking her will continue as she works for us. Thank you. I'd just like to say a few words. Um, first, I'd like to thank everyone who was involved in the process. And in particular, I, I don't know who put those two days together. I don't know if it was Judy or you, Brian, or Brian, a few of or us all of you guys. But it, yeah. it, it was an amazing two days where three people were cycling through about <laughs> 60 different things, and how how you all figured out how to do that is pretty amazing. So I really appreciate that. But I just wanted to echo what other people said. The, when we were doing our last interviews and after the second person I was like "Whoa, well, are we gonna <laughs> be able to, are we gonna have the energy to do this third interview and when Patty came in something clicked mm -hmm. you know how you can be in a group and you start get this feeling like something clicks you know and it felt like we were working together and I guess when she left everyone just went well this is who it is and yeah. That's who she rose to the top for the staff and citizens. Yeah, and I also want to uh, again thank everybody that participated. Um, being part of the planning, it was really nice to be able to pick up the phone and anybody that I spoke to wanted to participate, wanted to help uh, make those two days work, and uh, that was really wonderful. And uh, I definitely think we should give a super special thanks to Judy Kittner yes. <laughs> for making it all happen. Yes, thanks. But it was like having shoemakers elves. I mean, truly, <laughs> like, who wants to do this? Oh, it's done. I mean, honestly, it was, it was pretty great. So. Okay. so, Judy, I guess we can read the legislation now. <laughs> okay. This is Resolution 2014-25, appointing Patty Bates as Village Manager. Whereas the Village of Yellow Springs engaged in a national search to identify potential candidates for the position of Village Manager, and whereas Village residents participated in a process to identify and interview three finalists, and residents were also provided the opportunity to share their observations and recommendations regarding the qualifications of the finalists, and whereas the Village Council has interviewed the finalists and considered the comments and recommendations of Village residents, Council has determined and wishes to engage Patty Bates as village manager. Now, therefore, the Council of the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, hereby resolves that Section 1, Patty Bates is appointed to serve as village manager for the Village of Yellow Springs to serve at the pleasure of Council. Section 2, the duties of the village manager shall be those as provided for in the charter for the village manager and pursuant to the employment agreement attached to this resolution as Exhibit A. Section 3, the employment for services of the village manager is hereby approved in the substanti substantially the same form as Exhibit A. The President of Council is hereby authorized to execute the employment agreement and to take such other actions on behalf of the village as may be necessary to assure this appointment. Section 4, the village manager shall be considered an employee on full-time status. As provided in the contract, the employee shall receive the salary and benefits as provided for in the contract. The actions of this council are pursuant to the home rule powers of the village. Section 5, this resolution shall be in full force and effect upon its adoption. It is the intent of the council that the employment agreement will be effective upon signature by the parties. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Second. Uh, discussion? I think we've already had our discussion. Any comments from citizens? Bring it back to council table. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Um, then we'll jump on to resolution 2014-27, releasing funds held to guarantee repayment of an economic development loan made by the village. I don't know if we need <coughs> to do that by plan. title. <laughs> Just ask um, But it's, I, I think we have to read the whole thing only because it's, um, no, go ahead and just read it by title. Okay. Authorizing forgiveness of the loan to the Antioch Company LLC and releasing the letter of credit. Okay. So in 2011, August 19th of 2011, um, the village um, passed a resolution um, loaning, um, $30,000 to uh, Creative Memories slash Antioch Publishing to build a wall um, in, their, in their offices to enable eHealth Data Services to move their offices in there. That was um, basically, it's an incentive that we passed along to keep that employer. 
um, and uh, council agreed to do that. Um, part of the, the loan was that for each year they retained, was it 15 employees? 5,000 square feet. In 5,000 square feet we would forgive ten thousand dollars well I'm not I don't know that we're actually totally to the end of the, to the loan period but the company doesn't exist anymore I mean the company filed bankruptcy they've more than met their obligation and as far as as the the loan is concerned I mean we, we essentially if they if they agreed to that that they that they kept those those jobs for that length of time we agreed to forgive the loan they've long since met that so part of this is to forgive the loan and then the other part of it is that there were a group of business leaders who put up fifteen thousand dollar guarantee um, against that loan so that if they did default on the loan that money would have gone to the village and we are now since we're releasing the, the we're releasing the promissory note we can just release that too so that they don't have that um, holding back their other financial um, arrangements so um, so that's basically what this is about questions or comments from council citizens Sarah Wildman I think you might have something to say about this I do. Hello, my name is Sarah Wildman. I was Economic Sustainability Coordinator for the Village of Yellow Springs when uh, Council passed this legislation. And I wanted to just take this opportunity to thank those Council, those individuals who were on Council at that time, and surely our Council members now, for taking, um, at that time, taking these steps to encourage business and uh, 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 I think make a, a really important statement uh, on behalf of the Village that business we embrace business here we think business is good we want to keep business in town and I really think that uh, council made that very clear I appreciate the work of our present council and I'm glad we can release our fellow citizens from this indenture or whatever <laughs> uh, and uh, just thank you all very much and encourage us to keep moving ahead with uh, business interests in Yellow Springs thank you thanks Sarah thanks. And just, I, I probably most of you know, but just to, to talk about how important that, how significant that $30,000 investment, it also allowed us to retain Antioch University, um, the Antioch University um, group in, in the rest of the 17,000 square feet that remained. So we retained two businesses in Yellow Springs that we would have lost were it not for a small $30,000 investment. So. Um, I feel that was money quite well spent. Um, you ready to take a vote? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 So um, I guess, Jerry, do you want to, I, I mean, Judy will read the next resolution, okay. but I've got to recuse myself so you can take on the discussion. Okay, this is awarding a contract for bids for construction of public improvements on Cemetery Street and Limestone Street. Whereas the village is contractually obligated to construct a new water line in, on Cemetery Street, and whereas it is further necessary to instor, install storm drainage and sanitary sewer lines on East Limestone Street and a water line from South Walnut Street to the east side of Xenia Avenue, and whereas the village has caused designs to be drawn and specifications written and advertised for bids for the above work, all bid as a single project. And whereas after distributing several sets of plans to prospective bidders and having received two bids, an apparent lowest and best bid has been identified. Now therefore the Council of the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio does hereby resolve that. Section 1, the bid for construction of the above decided improvements is hereby awarded to Durst Brothers Excavating of Tip City, Ohio. Section 2, the amount of Durst Brothers bid at $309,502 is slightly more than 1% higher than the engineer's estimate of $305,000. Section 3, the village manager is hereby authorized and directed to enter into a contract to construct the improvements as designed with Thirst Brothers Excavating. Oh, do I have a motion? I so move. Second. Okay. Uh, Ken? Yes, may I? Um, the Cemetery Street water line is part of a project that's tied to Home Inc.'s plans to build four homes there. And we'd like to get the water line in before they have to build the homes. <coughs> and this seems to be dovetailing quite nicely. Uh, the other projects are related to the Hammond 
Hotel or the Mills Hotel. Um, and uh, we, all, we had six or seven people express interest. A couple, one of the bidders came back and said, and there's a statutory requirement, if the bid comes in more than 10% above the engineer's estimate, we have to throw it out and start over. And this bid was uh, great because it's only fractionally over the est engineer's estimate. So uh, anyway, we had a couple of bidders who felt they couldn't do it for that price, and so they didn't submit bids. So that's why we got relatively few bids. This bidder is new to us. I've checked with people they've worked for before in Clark County and Huber Heights, and in both cases they've done more than one project for them and they would be happy to hire them again. Very pleased with their work and so uh, the, the reason this says they're the apparent low bidder is we open bids at 2 p.m. Friday and uh, it's a document about this thick and I hadn't had time to read it when I wrote the, the uh, resolution but I've gone through it over the weekend. There's one error in the bid that I would like to ask you to amend the motion or the, um, or the resolution. They, uh, their, cal their calculation on one line was incorrect and they shorted themselves by $40. So I would like to make the amount $309,542. Um, and uh, so it's, uh, okay. they were good enough to meet our requirements. So uh, that's about it. No, Any questions from council? No, I just thank you for moving this along. Yeah, both the, of these projects. Yeah, the, we're we're hoping uh, once council acts, I go back to the bidder, we work out details. We're hoping to start sometime in early July, and uh, the main requirement was that it had to be after street fair. Uh, but that, that was it. So. After and before the next one. It, well, I, they, they should, yeah, they should be done before the one in October, but that's a little iffy. Any comments from citizens? If not, I'll bring it back to council. Okay. Uh, do, do we need a motion to amend? I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, I think we can just do it, sure, although it is so small that I don't think you actually have to have a motion. Okay, we've got a comment. Uh, Dan Kerrigan, um, so is this a vote for the uh, the bid itself, or is, is there mo any more discussion of this? This uh, is it. Well, this is the vote for Kent to go out and award the uh, contract to uh, Dirth uh, Brothers. Is it Kent? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, go ahead. Um, yeah, I was just wondering if there was any more discussion of this. Th this is it. You're going to award the bid. Right. Okay. Af after today. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, do I have a motion to amend by uh, forty dollars? I, I move that we am amend the the bid by forty dollars. So Second. Oh. Three three hundred and nine thousand five hundred and forty two dollars. Second. Okay. Do we you just uh, voice vote. So voice vote. vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. You have aye. president come back in. Take over. Do we need a second vote to, was that all inclusive? Was that a vote on the amendment or was it? Well, you. Or as amended. Okay. We voted on <laughs> the amendment. Uh, Karen, plug your ears here. <laughs> we voted on the amendment. Now we have to actually vote on the, the uh, resolution itself now. All in favor say aye. Oh, aye. 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 Okay. Sorry. 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 There was some confusion. It was a technical error. Sorry. Okay, now is the time in the agenda for citizens' concerns. Um, for items that aren't on the agenda, we added a lot of stuff, so um, you may not know if it's on the agenda or not. Um, so um, anybody just come up and state your name, three minutes. Um, Joe? I'm Joe Lewis. I live 530 Fairfield Pike. lived there for over 50 years. <coughs> the time we've lived there, the creek which runs through our, our property has been a sense of joy and sometimes amazement and discouragement. On the 21st of uh, May, a couple of weeks ago, I guess it was, we had a severe flood along through our, through our property. 
about two hours after it quit, had quit raining, about 8 o'clock, in fact it was, I, I went over to uh, King Street and looked at the uh, water coming over the dam. A little bit was coming through the pipe. And so I, I had heard over the last, well, several months that, well, there are beavers over there and sometimes someone would pull the, uh, take the dam down. And when you take the dam down, then we get a flush of water through the, through the creek and uh, it, it would get washed out. Now, when I looked at it uh, 24 hours after the, after the flood, it, water was still coming over the dam, around it, and a little bit was coming through the pipe. So we've had, o over the 50 years that I've lived there, we've had um, three <laughs> major projects on the creek most, I think, were uh, successful. In the 40s, uh, 40 years ago, I know we had one uh, when um, they extended a 60-inch tile across uh, Dayton Street and started draining areas up where Littlewood is. The creek actually drains uh, every, the whole area south of uh, south side of town and, and east, over the South College and over to uh, East End Road. About uh, probably 30 years ago, we were having more problems. I don't think I'm going to be able to finish this in my time, but anyway, uh, we had a large project. I've had track hose sitting in my yard over a period of um, weeks and months, putting in a wall, digging out, putting in riprap. And that was fairly successful. A few years ago, council um, built the uh, detention basin. And we were told that this was going to be something that would hold the, the major flood of water back. And it has done that up to a degree. Recently, it has not been effective, I don't think. It was not effective on the 21st of May. When I hear now that council themselves are looking at growing beavers and putting over there, we're taxpayers on, on Fairfield Pike. We have several people on Fairfield Pike which are, were affected by this. I remember coming down and talking to Kent. Oops, sorry, Joe. Okay, Judy. <coughs> may, I, may I continue? Yeah, we'll give you, th how, how much longer do you think? Well, I don't know. I've been here 50 years and okay. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Let's hope it won't be that long. I remember we came down when uh, we, I think you had Wolpert or someone in from uh, probably a city engineering firm when we were looking at the old culvert which was there, it wasn't mm -hmm. wide enough. What was happening is that water was coming so fast, it was building up behind the culvert. The culvert and the road made a dam. Water would come over the dam, down our driveway, and into our yard. There's a house sitting over there now. If we prefer beavers over having drainage, that house is sitting there now will be in danger if it builds up again. We had about 12 inches to the top of the culvert the other day. Had it gone another 12 inches, it would start building back up and be damaging, endangering that house. But anyway, we had a yard full of water. It's not the first time we've had it. Before we spent, before you, uh, before council spent tens of thousands of dollars on many different projects, we would get it frequently. But the whole south side of town is draining through this and it does it effectively. But you, we have to have some control the detention basin needs to control it so that we don't get that overflow. It's like sitting in, in New Orleans and you have Lake uh, Ponson train up the top of you. It overflows, it flushes out the whole, whole town. Well, here we have now, we have a detention basin, which if you let it fill up, it's going to overflow the dam. When I stopped on King Street about 8 o'clock on the 21st, water was running across the street. I was in my truck, so water was running over. There's a little bit of water coming out of the, out of the pipe. It's a 36-inch pipe. A lot of water was coming around and over the dam. I think it's, very, it's what you did. You built a, a very nice detention basin, but it's been compromised by, by, well, by improper maintenance, I believe. And now, when you get a, a big uh, lot of rain, we had three and a half inches of rain in a couple of hours. So now, when you get that much rain, or maybe not even that much, if the beavers are successful in blocking off the whole tile, which they have been, then we're gonna get a, fl get a flood again. I think it, is, uh, it would be wrong for you to have spent that much money 
doing this over the years and have people sitting here expecting to have flood abatement and now we're going to do something else. It's, it's a green area, but also we have people, we have homes that are being affected by inattention and improper maintenance. I thank you for your time. Thanks, Joe. Um, I think so, staff, I think will be, you know, the, the whole issue of what we're going to do with that detention pond will we'll be on a future agenda. We'll, we'll make sure that that's published so that you know about it. I mean, I will say that, that the, the May 21st event was hopefully something that's not going to happen. I mean, there was so much flooding all over town that was totally uh, out of control that I don't, I don't know that it wouldn't have happened even um, were it not. For, but no. No. there was flooding that happened that, that, you know, has never happened before. So, but, you know, maybe you could ha you and staff could go talk to Joe and, and mm -hmm. see some of the situations with the neighbor neighboring properties that he mentioned um, any other and, and I like oh. to, when you go I go okay. with you I also know I'm sorry I also knew John Eastman was out there looking at it when it was happening so yeah yeah J John indicated that it was functioning as it should function and that the beaver activity hadn't really impacted how it was functioning that's my understanding of what John said uh, which is not to say that it can't do that, but right. that was what John said. Um, other citizens' concerns, other comments about items that aren't on the agenda? Joe, we, I mean, we will talk about this. This, is, this will be on an upcoming agenda item, Joe. Well, I'm, I may not be, um, if it happens this month, I might not be available for it, but I definitely don't want anything to happen with regards to growing beavers until we're consulted. It will be a discussion. It will be a public discussion. Thank you. Uh, um, okay, next on to old business. Um, state of the budget report from Finance Director Melissa Van Zant. But if I might, I'd like to mention something before Melissa starts. Uh, at our last council meeting, Chrissy Cruz made a very uh, appropriate comment, which was, how come our budget suddenly jumped from six million to seven and a half million? And the answer is because I was reading the reports incorrectly. This is a spreadsheet that shows the village's finances. And column one is what we had to start with, then what we brought in this month, what we spent this month, uh, excuse me, what we brought in this month, year to date income, expenditures uh, this month, expenditures year to date, and so on, and go across. One of the columns is encumbrances. So sometime in January, we issue a purchase order to AMP, American Municipal Power, for something like $3 million to provide our wholesale electricity for the year. And then over here is the, re the, the, re un the re remaining balance. And I've been reading this column. Well, the big problem is there's millions of dollars in the next to the last column that's still sitting in the bank. We're thinking we might spend it, but it's still there. So. I was simply reading the wrong part of the report. So our balance has never been materially below seven and a half million. Um, I was just, so uh, there's no mystery except that I, uh, I was not doing it correctly. Melissa? Okay, um, what you see in the packet is uh, at the request of Karen to try to see what kind of uh, projected effects the operating budget as well as the capital budget that was passed um, about a month, month and a half ago um, would have on the year as well as a uh, capital budget for 15, which is also an exercise that needs to go with the tax budget, which is due on or about July 1st with the county, um, which is kind of a preliminary exercise to the, to the budget process for the following year. So what you see in the packet, actually let me back up. I had provided um, a beginning beginning balance and then what a projected effects the Which operating budget want. would have. Um, it actually kind of looks like this, but this is what I provided to you all um, in the decision-making process during the first round of budget discussions. And I had projected that the operating budget would give us a deficit of, a, of approximately 262000 that changed a little bit after the year end. Didn't change a whole lot. Um, so if you 
I just wanted to point out that that was kind of the original projection. But if you take a look at the sheet that looks like this, the pro, um, says 2014 projected budget effects. It's kind of got some green and it's in a it's in a mm -hmm. uh, portrait orientation versus a landscape. This kind of just gives us the highlights of kind of the discussion tonight. I would like to come back next month, um, probably maybe the one of the July meetings to talk about where we are actually at mid-year. So this is just the projected effects on the budget after all of the after the operating budget had passed as well as the capital budget had passed. So if you take a look at the top line, that was the beginning balance of all of our funds. So that's everything together, general funds, special revenue funds, and enterprise funds. And then I have in there the projected revenues for the year and then the adjusted balance of all funds. And then the 2014 operating expenses are there. That's the ordinance that was passed, the first one. And then the second line are all the capital projects that were approved. And then there were also some other requests during the supplemental appropriation that included the capital that gets us to that bottom figure of total 2014 appropriations, which is $10,994,487. And then our projected end of the year balance for all funds is $4,917,538. So this is the projected budget effects that will occur with everything that has been approved and what we expect to bring in. And then the following two pages, which are um, let's see, landscape orientation. The first one with less colors, less columns, is the operating budget and its effect on the fund balances, which if you look down in the bottom right corner, it's 246,331 is the projected deficit of just operating costs this year. And then to the right, it shows the, the percent of change in the effect on each fund that comes up with that total. So we have all of the funds listed to the far left. We have our beginning balance, which that bottom dollar coordinates with what was on that front page. And then we've got all of the projected revenues, which were presented in the budget presentations previously. And then the adjusted balance, which takes the beginning balance and what we expect to bring in and gives us a total of what we are projecting to work with for the year. And then we've got the ordinance that was passed of our operating budget, which is ordinance 2014-07. And then that bottom dollar um, matches what was on the ordinance and then how it was separated out. And then the next column in green is the projected ending balance. So what we're doing is we're comparing that 246,331 is the effect that all of the projected revenues and expenditures along with our beginning balance will have on our ending balance. So we are starting out the year with seven, roughly seven and a half million, and when it's all over and done with, it's going to be about seven and seven point two million with our op just our operating costs. So that was the projected effect that we will have just with operating. So you can see the difference between what the operating cost effect will have on the budget, and then the second sheet, which we can get into, includes all the capital expenditures and other um, the other items that were on that ordinance, the second one. But and you you referred to it at the beginning that operating deficit is is significantly lower than we were seeing initially, right? It's not significantly lower. When we spoke earlier in the week, I had forgotten that um, the projected revenues. I had some of the projected revenues from the supplemental mm -hmm. that included transfers to offset the streets and the parks okay. and the green space. So once I realized that and I took that out of there, it it, it was pretty much right on. It was about twenty thousand lower. I projected that it was going to be. 260,000, 262,000 when we met a couple months ago, and it's actually 246,000. So it wasn't it wasn't that far off in terms of the operating cost, but what's, yeah. What's the difference between what you have in parentheses and what's in red? 
I, I've always assumed, I've always thought that if it's in parentheses, it's a deficit, or if it's red, if it's a deficit. Well, just because of the Excel spreadsheet and the nature of this spreadsheet to get the figures to work out, um, the ones that are in parentheses are positive amounts. Okay. I mean, and, I, and just in because of the spreadsheet and how I had to okay. make all the formulas shake out, yeah, so it does look a little bit different, but that's why I highlighted those in red so that they were so those a those are the funds in which we have deficits. Correct. Okay. And then off to the right is the percent of change in each of those funds. So the first page is the is the operating budget um, detail. So does anybody have any questions on that? Just a. Uh, would you expect that this is going to change a lot based on sort of when expenditures are actually happening with salaries and things like that or is that sort of factored into this i do expect that it's going to fluctuate slightly um there there will be some changes in staff and there are going to be some other supplement um, supplemental appropriations that are going to have to be requested the village manager search wasn't really figured into the budget um, up front and how much that was going to cost um, there's also some talk about increases in the streets there's the filter rebuild that we didn't really take into consideration I've got a list of things that have kind of happened that we need to kind of keep an eye on so yeah it is gonna it is gonna change a little bit okay. now staffing wise like say in the PD uh, the the expected staffing of the PD is that was considered I mean you know I think that there was at least one position added right well and the but, one from 13 that okay. wasn't filled yes <coughs> and and I think we did have an assistant manager budgeted we did a, a new manager and mm -hmm. an assistant um, okay and but were there any other expected staffing changes um Joe Bates had asked for a part-timer in the water department and that was just a, a five thousand dollar expenditure mm -hmm. just okay. until the money is gone so that was the only minor change but I don't know if that okay. is gonna affect things very much I mean that's very minor but in terms of staffing now I mean and it depends on when an assistant village manager might realistically be hired I think that we were figuring in like four or five months mm -hmm. um, in that calculation in the budget so it's right. everything is pretty much staying on target in terms of staff and salaries and personnel costs so far <coughs> so does anybody have any questions about the operating budget and the effects that it had on the budget or will have no okay the next page which is has a couple more colored columns in here because it includes it's, it's basically the same thing. We start out with our beginning balance, projected revenues, and adjusted balance. And then we've got the original ordinance is included in there again. And then in purple is the supplemental appropriations and how those were broken down. And that bottom figure also matches exactly the ordinance that was passed. So then we've got in orange our total appropriations, which take into consideration our operating costs, as well as our capital and other supplemental items that were broken down and then our projected ending balance and then to the far right is that that um, that projected effect on all fund balances and percent of change so with where we stand right now if everything is purchased that was committed to be purchased in terms of the capital budget our beginning balance again was seven million four hundred eighty-eight thousand nine hundred and two and then if like I said if everything is purchased that is going to be committed to be purchased we should end the year at four million nine hundred seventeen thousand five hundred thirty eight dollars which will take our our fund balances down two million five hundred seventy one thousand three hundred and sixty four dollars at the end of the year if everything is purchased that was committed to be purchased there and I, I will I will say that since the capital budget had been passed it got um, tied up in the auditor's office for a while so it wasn't uploaded until about a month after and at this point there aren't very many purchase orders or money encumbered at all right now I very few purchases have, have been um, put through so 
that's kind of where we stand right now and when I come back in July I will give you actuals at mid-year and I will be able to give more accurate projections but with right now with the capital not any of the money being encumbered right now it looks a little bit better than what than what it will once those purchases start to get pushed through so so one thing I notice is that 1.5 of that 2.5 mil is uh, as related to um, deficits in the fund balances, meaning uh, electric, water, sewer, solid waste. We're, we're look, that's the page we're looking at, right? You're looking at the, the one that's got everything with the capital? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're, and you're just referring to the effects on just those enterprise funds. Exactly. Yes, yes, those, those they are going into reserves. Um, I've got the percentage that they're going into their reserves to the far right as well, so that you can see those actuals. I, I think the electric fund is the one that's the biggest surprise to me is because, um, I mean, we've always talked about this <coughs> having like three and a half million or four million dollars fund balance in the electric fund. <coughs> we clearly don't have that, and, and you know, we're, we are deficit spending it. We have been deficit spending in the electric fund <coughs> um, and we don't have any major capital projects. So I am very confused why the electric fund is declining so precipitously. If that's something that maybe Johnny could, maybe when, when <coughs> I'm probably going to have to go out and get a drink of water. Maybe when you come back in July, if you guys could look into what's going on with the electric fund because that one is is something I don't understand why it's happening. Yeah, that's. I can understand the general fund because I know we're our revenues are flat and our expenses are going up. Electric, I don't. Have a clue. I mean, that's thirty percent of the. <clears throat> okay. And I know that um, we are taking we are taking a look at some of the delinquent accounts and how to try to capture revenue that. Um, hasn't been previously captured with the implementation of credit cards and credit card processing we hope that that'll help and then we've also looked at a number of different ways that we can try to capture lost revenue as well to kind of help that it we, we run about twenty thousand dollars a year uncollected in our enterprise funds so trying to capture as much of that as we can to minimize that number is going to be something that is really important to me and on my priority list but <coughs> credit card processing we hope will really help with that too so we just started that um, about a week or two ago so and we haven't um, widely advertised that yet it went out on all the utility bills that people should be getting in the mail any day now so I'm hoping that that'll help a little bit but capturing lost um, or, or uncollected revenue is is a pretty important piece of this too so it hasn't been very aggressively approached before and not to say that an aggressive approach is what I'm um, considering but definitely looking at that and trying to figure out how we can go about trying to make up for some of that lost lost revenue and Melissa with the credit cards so did I read correctly that people can call in mm -hmm. okay so they don't have to come to the window no they have to have the card in hand so that they can have the CVV code on the back so that they can give that to us okay so yeah people will be able to call in and so that ex it, it kind of expands the utility window hours per se because they could call in at three o'clock if they wanted to and we could take their credit card even though the window closes at two. Mm -hmm. So that's something that we can process mm -hmm. any time of the day as long as staff is there. What is the uh, supplemental appropriation in the electric mm -hmm. fund that 916,000? Um, part of that was an additional power cost. Last year um, in the electric and the solid waste funds bills for 2013 were being paid in 2014 so it slightly skewed things it looked like the funds were doing a little bit better at the end of last year because those bills weren't paid until this year so that was just kind of kind of to offset we we didn't need as much as we asked for but Johnny felt the need to ask for a little bit more just so that we'd make sure that we didn't have to come back and if the money's not spent then the money stays in the fund so we thought it was a safe approach so that is the effect on the projected effect on the budget with everything that's been approved to date. And if anybody has any suggestions as to what they would like for me to bring um, to the next meeting, I am more than willing to.
take those suggestions and give you guys what you are looking for. Um, but we do, I do have the capital budget for 2015 as well. And <coughs> basically what I did was anything that was committed to be spent in 14, I dropped off the list because I'm assuming that it will be, it will be completed within 14. So this was everything that was left on the list and we also added in 2019 to take it out five years. There were very few things that were added to this. Um, I think that there were a few things in the electric fund and there were a few things in the water funds as well as the sewer funds. So I think that the enterprise funds were the only things that were um, that you would see extra projects added to. There wasn't anything extra in the general fund or the um, special revenue funds. Jason was out of the office and I didn't get any, um, any additional items from him. So it was just enterprise funds. Now with some of these big ticket items, I mean, the, what we're reading here is if we paid that all in the, in that year, right? Not if we financed it for 20 years no, or something, right? No, because we weren't really sure um, what the financing might look like at this point. So we just said we anticipate, anticipate this project being completed in this year. So we were putting that amount of money in that year. Okay. However, it could be financed out and it wouldn't have that same effect on the budget but not knowing exactly what some of that financing might look like we just put total project dollars for that year and that we expect it to be completed. And for you know for example we do have four hundred thousand dollar grant on the, the f this first project the water line the Livermore um, South College water line project so you know I know that that doesn't go in a capital budget but that might be a note you would put okay um, next time is yep. to know and, and maybe even highlight, um, you know, I think that I think that there will be, and maybe by the time you come again, I know Kent's working on on um, some potential grants, OPWC grants for the bottleneck, Xenia Avenue bottleneck, and maybe the water plant. So we may have a little bit more information on some additional grants, at least to know that we that we're going to apply for grant funding and low interest loans um, from OPWC. So. Any other questions, Council? Citizens? Sue? <clears throat> Sorry about the chair arrangement. It isn't very easy, is it? I'm Sue Abendroth. I don't have the papers in front of me, and it might not be appropriate in this <clears throat> discussion, but I don't know enough to know. Uh, we were involved in a lot of legal uh, expenses over the past two or three years with a lawsuit <coughs> about the strewing property and my understanding is that the original uh, case was uh, the village's case was rejected and in the second one the attorney the appeal was rejected and so my question is how much more are we going to do this What's the status of it? Why are we continuing on if we're continuing on? Because it seems fairly clear at this point that that lawsuit is not, uh, it's been decided. Thank you. Thanks, Sue. Um, it actually is um, a topic of discussion in our executive session. Any other comments? Um, moving on to um, <clears throat> a water plant report. Um, I guess we've had a little bit of that already, um, talking about the, the filter. Is there anything related to the new project speaking? You just missed a good comment, Chris. Um, <laughs> um, is there anything, um, I know John Eastman isn't here and you've been working with him. Um, do you want to talk about the, the new water plant at, or the new project or because um, I think we've had the report on the old one so <clears throat> we had a meeting a uh, week before last with some of our yar larger water users and some of the people for whom water is a more critical part of their business the brewery is an example and what we discovered is that a lot of these large users are taking our water as sort of a do-it-yourself kit. They start with what we give them and then they do their own treatment because what they find is that the village's water 
is so hard on their equipment and their processes uh, that they really can't use it as it's delivered. And so people like uh, Xylem and the brewery and Antioch University and so on are uh, spending a lot of money to take the water we give them and, and treat it so it's actually usable for their purposes. Uh, the fire department, for example, finds that our water is so corrosive that they have to spend extra money maintaining their valves and pumps and that kind of thing. So um, that I've been sort of ambivalent about the notion of softening, but that sort of cemented my thoughts that softening is something we really need to look at very seriously um, as part of this. So I can just tell you that generally uh, one, of, one of the questions is do we rehabilitate our present plant or do we build a new one? And the staff are pretty universally in favor of building a new plant, not trying to rehabilitate the old one. Um, one of the advantages of the old plant and keeping it is that it's got a pretty high volume. It theoretically can process 1.7 million gallons a day. Well, that's great, but we're only using less than 400,000 gallons a day. And the wells that we have can only produce 1.3 million gallons a day. So why do we need a plant that will produce that much water? Um, so that's one reason I think, you know, the other, the other problem is the, the staff and I are pretty twitchy about the notion of trying to guarantee people of supply a steady, reliable supply of safe water at the same time that we're taking pieces of it out out of action and replacing them bit by bit. Um, right now we've got one third of our filter capacity down, which would be one of the situations we'd face pretty for quite a while if we rehabilitated the present plant, we'd take them out one at a time. And it's not a problem because we have such excess capacity, except if you listen to the way the resolution was written, except if we get some extraordinary demand for water such as a large fire, then we're in trouble. So, uh, so I will say that the staff and I are leaning very heavily towards build a new plant, don't fix the old one, and number two, add softening. And the softening sort of reinforces that because of the way our plant is constructed now, it would be almost impossible to add the softening process if we rehabilitate the present plant. And I won't go into details, it's more complex than it's worth explaining, but if we're going to soften, we almost have to build a new plant. So that's. <coughs> Do we have a timeline? I, I'm concerned that our plant is telling us we need to do something. And it is. And I don't know if we have the list of things. It seemed like we had a list of things that we needed to get information on, but I really think we need to be moving this. Yeah, we are working on that. For example, I've just recently gotten a lot of data on the distinctions and the benefits or the downsides of doing a design build versus a conventional engineering plan first, then bid for a specific design. So I'll be sharing that with council. I mean, so I, I had, there was a, a quote from me in the paper, and I hope council didn't mind. I mean, it was basically my hopes. I didn't intend for this to be a council decision. But what I would like to see in 2014 is a decision made on what our solution is going to be and, and potentially even engineering drawings completed so that we're ready for construction of a new plant in 2015. Um, something else that Kent and I have been talking about is um, he is looking, and I think the deadline for the OPWC grants is, is it July? July 18th. Which is, boy, I mean, bad timing on that with Patty coming in. Um, so I think Kent may be preparing those, but, um, you know, the potential of packaging projects, a couple of projects together, I mean, maybe packaging the two distribution projects, and then keeping, I would think we would keep the plant separate, yes. probably, as a separate. So. Yeah. I mean, we've got, we have a lot of water projects coming up that are really important, and, but I take 
completing those water projects, especially the distribution ones, would be huge. Because that came out from a lot of, actually from <coughs> Xylem, their number one issue was, was not the water quality, but the quantity, yeah. because they have a huge problem with fire flow. Their insurance agency wants them um, to have more fire flow. And so given that we're going to have a new village manager, it seems, how are we going to transmit, keep, keep things moving along? I don't plan to disappear when she starts. <laughs> um, I uh, am making tentative plans to be out of town for a couple of weeks in August, but most of the month of July I'll be around. I, I've, I don't know if I mentioned this in my newsletter, I've been in situations where I was the new manager and there was somebody left. When I came to Yellow Springs, John Hart was the interim manager and they scheduled him to work with me nonstop for two weeks. And frankly, I find it suffocating having someone joined at the hip. <laughs> uh, and I don't intend to do that. I intend to spend half a day, three days a week with Patty when she starts for maybe two weeks. And then something a little more abbreviated after that, you know, and gradually taper off. But I expect to, you know, be working with her for probably a couple of months at least. Because stuff keeps coming up. I mean, um, we have a cable television franchise that expires in September. And because of the way the state has treated cable television franchising, we cannot have our, it looks like we cannot have our own standalone, unique cable franchise. We will be part of a system dictated uh, by the state of Ohio. But we can continue to get franchise fees. And the village in 2008 passed an ordinance saying, okay, the state is trying to undercut us, but we still demand the, the rent that we charge for them to use our poles and our rights of way. Um, but anyway, that, but that, that, that just came up last week. So who knows what will happen. Well, yeah. Yeah. But I think my, maybe over the next couple of weeks, um, for the either for the next meeting in June or the or the first meeting in July, while Ken is still here, um, he and I can work together to put a, a schedule together. And if, if one other council member wants to on the water plant, okay, um, yeah. if one of one other person wants to work with us, just so that we. Um, we have something to give to Patty. <coughs> Patty will be aware of what we've done, you know, and get Judy to help us put the packet together. I mean, she's going to she's gonna get a big packet of information about the water plan. Okay, I, I'd be willing to work on that. Yeah, one of the things I've discovered, for example, just recently, Marianne, is that we've been looking all along at what they call ion exchange softening, which is a salt process. And it turns out that Ohio EPA probably hasn't given a permit for those in at least a couple of years because of the impact on the on the discharge stream. Um, so we may be looking at another type of softening altogether, like lime softening, which is what Springfield uses. Right. Typically hasn't been done on our scale, but small, plant, small organizations like ours are probably going to have to shift to that simply because we won't be permitted to do the simplest, easiest, most obvious choice. Hmm. So uh, are we ready to move on? Yes. Any, any questions or comments from citizens about the water plant? <clears throat> okay. Um, next is village man manager recommendation for the Fair Acres street improvement. Sure. And I see several people from Fair Acres here, so you can rebut anything I say that's <laughs> incorrect. The complaints that I've heard are about the road surfaces in Fair Acres. They're broken and uneven and rough. And the leading concern I hear from the people who live there is we want our streets fixed. I understand when that first came to the village uh, a couple of years ago, um, village staff said, oh, we can't put lots of money into the streets until we fix what's under the streets because the water and the sewer lines were never, were not properly installed in the first place. And so I think water particularly, we keep getting regular instances of water line breaks. Um, you folks can correct me if I'm wrong. The understanding I get is that those breaks are sporadic and infrequent and nobody really suffers seriously from a lack of water. And so um, I hear less concern from residents about the 
technical deficiencies of the utility systems. I don't think anybody has a recurring problem with sewer service and again other than an occasional water line break um, I don't hear a lot of complaints about that so so I've I, I started out being concerned about fixing a street on top of a faulty base and now I'm coming around to be more sympathetic to the residents concerns what I'm suggesting at this point I had originally put money in the budget for what is called a cape seal it's a double seal it's a tar and chip surface followed by a slurry seal and the slurry seal corrects a lot of the problems and the deficiencies that come out of a chip seal process. But looking at the streets there, I really think they're in too bad a shape for that to work. And so now I'm suggesting, and, and Jason uh, Hamby, our street superintendent, agrees, that the first thing we need to do is mill the edges of the pavement so that a new surface, a new layer of asphalt doesn't bury the curbs so the curbs can continue to function in their role as channeling stormwater and then go back and do a two inch asphalt overlay over the whole street. Now the negative side of that is this is going to cost about forty thousand dollars more than I originally budgeted. So we've got two choices. One is to scale back resurfacing we had planned elsewhere or the other is to ask council to do a, f a supplemental appropriation to cover this increased cost. And that's and that would be my recommendation at this point. It is for supplemental? Yes, sir. That's yeah, okay. Well what would we scale back? Well we have plan we have uh, we have plans for most of the south side of uh, the village. So uh, South View, Spillan, um, I'd have to look. I think Miami, Brookside, Randall, you know, we've got most of that section of town. Right scheduled for resurfacing this year. So we would look at that, decide which ones needed at least, and remove those from the plan, channel, and channel that money to Fair Acres. So yeah, that's the two choices. Well, I, I, I would favor a supplemental appropriation. Yeah. I, has, has I'd like to hear what the, if the residents think that's a suitable. Can, can I ask a yeah. question that, <clears throat> Um, my understanding is that there's also that there are also stormwater issues, and I know that that's one of the reasons you're you're right. you're milling down. But you know, are the storm drains adequate, and is that something that that maybe um, has has um, Joe or any whoever's doing the CMOM managing the CMOM has any of that been looked at, and do we need to do anything um, with storm drainage that that might impact that street budget? <coughs> I won't say it doesn't need it, but now you're talking about another, you're talking about doubling the cost, I would guess. Okay. I, I, know, it, I know it wasn't effective a week ago Wednesday, well, I'm not but it, it, about wasn't, that. it wasn't anywhere else in yeah. town either, so <laughs> I, I wouldn't take that as my model. Right. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, any citizens that wish to speak? Mary? On, on Whitehall. Um, I really appreciate your looking at the difficulties of our roads in that area. Um, we have had two houses on our street that have had the uh, water mains replaced from house to street. I don't know if that was part of what Kent was talking about or not. Yeah. But we have sewers that are um, at least three inches below surface of the road. What do you do with that? like in front of my house. <laughs> okay. Is, 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 it hazard. A is it a problem because the sewers don't work? No, the, the, the round metal thing in the road oh, is, is oh. about this, this much sunk into the road, so it's the a hazard. The, the manhole? Yes. Oh, okay. No, when we resurface, typically, those are fairly easy to fix because what we do is we get a riser. We get a, a cast iron ring that fits into the thing okay. and raises it up enough to, so it brings it up flush with the new surface. Okay, so right. that would be a part of any resurfacing job. That's actually yeah, simple. Dan Kerrigan, I live on Whitehall. Um, I agree with your analysis, Kent, that uh, really the, uh, the streets need to be re 
round down and a two inch cap. I think another major point about this is the poor maintenance and the the way the streets were left to fall into depth, you know, into poor condition contributed a lot to the water breakages. If you don't have a sealed surface, the water penetrates and then you have water breakage. Okay. And I think, you know, the neglect that we've had in our neighborhood is part of the reasons why the the someone else was thinking, oh, we had to replace all the water and sewer, which is really, I I can stand the breakages. Uh, and by the way, there is a nice big four by eight hole on the end of Northwood that needs to be filled. Please fill it. I'll send you some pictures. Also, <laughs> finally, um, if you go to 205 Northwood, you can see an archaeology of four different layers of asphalt and it's down to the point where the concrete curb is showing and the raw packed gravel okay. it's very sad and we'd love to see this done sooner than later yes. okay, thank you. other comments peggy i'm peggy erskine um talking about drainage we have probably only four exits from the storm drains in our neighborhood. There is no storm sewer from our house, which is 234 in Northwood, all the way up and around on Whitehall. When they, when they added that development, they were allowed to do it without putting any storm drains in. So all of that just runs down the street and that wears away the area between the pavement and the, and the uh, curb. gutter, curb. the curb. And <clears throat> I understand it would cost a whole lot to put the storm drainage in, but when you're talking about drainage, that is a major part of that problem. Um, there are not any drains up at the top of uh, Fair Acres Drive. All of that goes around down to Mary's, uh, where she lives. So there really is very inadequate storm drainage there. And I don't know if there are any um, intermediary steps that could be taken to deal with that or not. But <clears throat> they're just I'm really, not aware of anything. They're just really I mean, I think the answer would be digging a big hole and putting in pipe and catch basins but again that's a that now we're talking about more probably doubling the cost so. and and as a result of it there are some houses with a gap about this big and this deep between the pavement and the drive it's it's washed it out so that that they have to drive over this gap to get into their driveway Thanks, Peggy. Um, other comments? Any other comments from council? Uh, yeah, we had talked about, uh, I think, having uh, spending some money to have an engineering study done to figure out what would need to be done to replace at least the well, well, the water lines, the sewer lines, and the laterals, which the village isn't yeah. responsible for. But um, so, where are we standing with that? I'm, I'm, I'm essentially saying forget about it. So, we're, so what we're saying is we will just have the water breakages once or twice a year. Right. Yes. For the foreseeable Although I think they, they didn't have, the, they hadn't had well, any this year. We had two. We had two, two this year. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Johnny was actually out there with us when we looked at that. And I think what Dan said, I think Dan's comment is, is, is good. I mean, I think once there is a new surface, not only will it provide more, more um, what's the word? Better ride quality? Uh, well, but, but it, won't, it will protect the water lines and the water won't be getting, you know, the, dra the water won't be getting down to, into the, the lines to freeze. So I think that, that just the maintenance of the road will help significantly. So it's not just the water lines. I think the poor condition of the road is probably contributing to the reason that those lines are breaking right so so what i would say um is that the next time we you know the next time the village 
re looks to repave those streets, they might have the same conversation. You know, that's when to look at the same conversation is, okay, is this, are we going to do this project in, you know, five years, six years, ten years, whatever. Well, and Kent, <clears throat> I had heard an estimate of like eight to ten years for this kind of fix. Oh, resurfacing? Yeah. Oh, no. I, two inch asphalt overlay ought to be 15 to 20. Okay. Um, I, go ahead, Meg. I just have another question. You talked about um, grinding the surface along the uh, gutters, but are you mm -hmm. going to talk about grinding the surface all the way across the street? Probably. Or are we going to end up with a crown like that? It would probably end up being two inches higher than it is now, but I don't think that's, it's not a problem presently, is it? The crown on your street? I, I don't know that it's a problem right now. It yeah. just seems kind of strange. <laughs> <laughs> Dan again. Uh, I think there is, and I know particularly in front of our house, there's about a, um, I'm going to say a two inch drop from the surface to the manhole. Mm -hmm. So that's in near the center of the street. So um, you might want to look it all over. Um, but um, uh, Marianne, to your thing about the idea of doing an engineering study, I don't understood the. I never. I mean, in terms of breakages of water breakages. Mm -hmm. So there was two last summer, but or last winter, I should say. I don't even remember where the other one was. But we're on Fair Acres, which borders where we live. There, there was two outages or two breakages, at two different spots. But that was over ten years or twelve years. So it isn't like there's. Oh, my understanding was it was once or twice a year. Yeah. And every time that happens, then the road has to get well, dug up, which so contributes to so the road's demise. Right. This is true, but if they, when they fix it or patch it quickly, it'll reduce the amount of more breakages. Thanks, Dan. Okay, so I is. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, thank uh, Jason, Hamby, Johnny Burns, and Kent for coming out um, and meeting with the residents. I it was actually really cool to see local government in action and really drill down on what needed to be done so I just wanted to say I appreciated it great so yeah sounds like we're we're hearing council agreement with uh, with Ken's recommendation and do, okay yeah that's yeah the, and the other thing I would say is that all over the village we've got streets and storm drainage and water and sewer lines that are less than optimum and uh, unless you're willing to do this by special assessment and get the residents to chip in the bulk of the money to do it, it as a practical matter, we're, we're not going to optimize any place, I don't think. We're going to keep patching. Okay. Uh, Actually, I just heard somebody mumble uh, when it would get started. Do we know anything about that yet? No, we, we do all of this through Green County and they do the actual scheduling we we piggyback on their paving contract so we get the advantage of bulk purchase and um, it will be the summer but it probably will be late summer typically we're on the end of their we tend to be on the end of their schedule right. unfortunately yeah, until you all vote republican you're not going to get good service <laughs> from the <county>. <laughs> <laughs> um, Next item on the agenda is uh, funding for the CBE. Um, that is a, a topic that, that uh, Kent suggested that we bring to the next meeting. Um, again, to kind of reiterate the situation. Um, <clears throat> one of the approach that Kent has been taking is, maybe I'll wait a minute. <laughs> <coughs> the approach that Ken's been taking on the CBE funding um, has been to kind of push the push legislation through so that we could um, 
work in anticipation of um, the, the fact that, that citizens have, have expressed a desire or an, uh, an expectation that they will be filing a referendum on the, um, on the CBE if we do. And, and the, the legislation that they would file that referendum on would be the funding. So that, that would be the appropriate one because that seems to be the, and John just arrived, um, that seems to be the, the um, main source of, of um, dissension is, you know, should the village fund the road, um, water and sewer infrastructure for the CBE or should the developer or should we just wait? So, um, so Kent's proposal is that we bring, um, it, it requires two readings. Um, if we want to allow, and we have expressed the fact that we, yes, we do want to allow for a referendum, a citizen referendum, um, it would be two readings and a 30-day, and then a, a standard two readings of an ordinance <coughs> that would allow that 30-day period before the ordinance was enacted. Um, and that would be the period where for the citizens to file a referendum. So um, that's the kind of schedule we've been working on um, and um, that Ken's proposing. So um, we haven't talked about this for a while. It's kind of been on a hiatus. And um, so... Um, I know Marianne has some thoughts. I don't know if you want to if you want to start, but um, I guess well, I, I'm <clears throat> just have begun to feel from various things that have happened or not happened that uh, we we have a lot on our plate, and I think that there are a number of things I would like to see a number of things be in, in place before we make a decision about funding. So I support that property being used for business and I can see at some point I would support the village moving forward with funding but at this point I don't think it's a good decision to to vote to fund the CBE this year other comments Yeah, I, I'm not in a big <coughs> hurry because I think anything that happens is going to, going to happen after I'm, I've left the village as employee. Um, but I don't see any point in delaying. And in fact, part of the reason I'm asking that these things be done on an emergency basis is an accommodation for the opponents so they can know that, <coughs> yes, the village's intent is to move forward, and this is the time to get our petitions together and go to the Board of Elections and I say, you know, bless you, let's find out. I, I mean, I, I believe and I hope that most people in Yellow Springs uh, <coughs> are very anxious to see economic development and revenue enhancement and maybe in the long term stable or lower taxes, um, utility rates are affected also. Uh, but I say fine, put it to a vote, let's find out. I, I don't, there's a distinction between moving the CBE forward and economic development. And I, I think that the village is going to find that with the CBE, the village government is going to have to be involved. Oh, yeah. And I would like us to decide on uh, whether or not we're going to have a designated CIC and whether we're going to have staff be funding for that CIC and to have. Uh, an economic plan that is public that that we that we agree upon um, and I, I'd like to see some people I, I'm very happy about the investment in the former community uh, or I mean the uh, creative memories building mm -hmm. so to me that's saying that there it Yellow Springs is a place where people want to be so I I do believe that the CBE could be successful but I don't think that I think we need to have some more ducks in the row. I, don't, I just don't feel like we have the capacity at this point to move forward on it. And so I would either vote to table the funding or I would vote no. So Ken, if we pass the funding mm -hmm. legislation, um, I mean, what does that mean besides triggering a referendum possibly? That, that's really it. I mean, I, I wouldn't dream of going out and asking for money or starting the bid process to actually construct the improvements until we were certain that that was going to happen. And that would mean, well, most likely not until after November. 
Do, do we start taking out any loans just because we've approved the funding? No. no. Do we lose anything if we do postpone this and start again next year? I mean, can we just pick up with that same legislation or? The only thing you lose is time and the potential advantage of having someone who wants space sooner. Mm -hmm. Well, there's, there's other risks too. I mean, I think that um, it's possible that interest rates will go up um, and, and the $400,000 is at risk. That's what the $400,000 U.S. Army Corps of Engineers grant is at risk and that's one of the things we already lost uh, $350,000 or so from the state of Ohio from ODOT because we didn't use the money in a timely manner and they took it for another project. So, so I'd, I'd say the number one risk is that we're losing $400,000 that is going to construct the water and sewer lines. Um, second is, is potentially, you know, will construction prices, things are still a little bit depressed in the industry. I think prices are probably still a little bit low. If things start to pick up, with which they seem to be, chances are prices will go up and, and interest rates may go up a little bit. So the project will cost more um, in, a, in a year. Um, so I'd say those are probably the two biggest risks. And, and obviously, if there is a potential loss of a, of a tenant. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we do have, um, the one thing I will say with, um, the, with the Creative Memories building is that there are 11 separate acres, I believe, that is potentially developable um, on the north end of that parcel. But that's not owned by the village. That's, no, that's owned by right. um, Yellow Springs LLC. So, so Marianne, one thing that I'm curious about is if, um, I mean, if we did move forward, it triggered the referendum and the community voted, you know, that we should move forward with the project. I mean, could we then get our ducks in a row? I mean, I, I guess I'm just wondering about the... Well, yeah, you'd have six months to start on a, a plan. And the so, I mean, if we got the signal that this is what people want. I, I, I don't think that we have put the pieces in place for, capa for the capacity that we need. And I'd rather have the pieces put in place for capacity before putting this money out. I mean, we already have $250,000 deficit in our operating budget and to add 80,000 more would put that up well above $300,000 operating deficit for at least probably five years and um, I, I just don't think that that's but we don't do that by just pa passing the funding right I mean until, until it's actually spent so so we can we can have the we can have the two readings we can say that we are going to fund the CBE to um, trigger the potential for the referendum until we go out for bids and until we um, decide to actually start construction release the bids and hire a contractor no money has been spent the money is sitting there it's just like you know it's just like if you get a if you get a home equity loan until you until you withdraw or until you draw on that loan you're not paying any interest on it that would be my understanding is yes. that and is there any are there any costs are there any just administrative costs that we're going to be um, <coughs> required to spend just by going through the process of um, no. passing the legislation no you what we're going to do is pass it and park it we'll just sit there until you decide that, that you want to do the construction I mean, I, I agree with Marianne about you know a, a strategic plan for the for the property. I mean, a general a general plan for the village, and mm -hmm. and also a um, um, a strategic plan specifically for that property. And and you know, Brian had done a little bit of research on um, uh, putting together feasibility. I mean, there are firms that do feasibility studies, and and. I, you know, those are the kinds of things I would really like to see. Um, I, I don't know that, you know, if we don't really have, you know, I don't know if that's something I want to be adding to our, um, to our, to our budget to be 
um, to be doing. Um, so, I mean, I would like to have, there are, you know, just, you know, what are the possibilities for this, for this property? Um, there are things that have been um, talked about, um, but we've not seen a, a firm plan put in place. Jerry, do you have anything to say? You know, there's there's always that concern that you know once we we put in the the street and utilities and so forth, uh, then the group comes back and says we need help with the building. Um, and 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 I'm kind of like Mary Ann. I'm I have somewhat mixed emotions because what I'm looking at is oh. Let's see, this is what, uh, June? Mm -hmm. And we started heated discussions back last year. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think the, the energy that we saw last year, I'm not seeing that same energy right now. Um, I'm, I'm a little discouraged uh, in that I, I and, and I'm on the, the CBE board and I haven't seen a lot of proactivities going on since we kind of tabled, if you want to call it, the uh, the funding issue and so forth. I felt CBE should have been moving forward in plans and so forth. Uh, community I, resources. The community resources. Yeah. Uh, and, and I haven't seen that. Um, whether there's a referendum or not, the land's still going to be out there, and we want some type of economic development. And and to me, I think they're two separate issues. And and I think the CBE has to start looking at it as two separate issues. They're coming to us for funding, but they need to be, to move forward. They they need a detailed plan. We we haven't seen that yet. And you know, by tabling the issue, we're just kind of kicking it down the road. I, I I just would like to see more energy from the CBE, and let's let's move forward. Let's look at you know, uh, long long term plan is just five years. Uh, if we all know that there's a building going to be required, have we been out? looking for investors and so forth. In other words, uh, CB and, and those folks have to show me a little bit more activity or, or I'm voting against it. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to be frank, you know, they, they've got to they, show me something. And uh, the last six months, they haven't showed me anything, so that's where I'm at. Um, so, but but you're talking about in, in the short term it for for this upcoming, you know, if we would choose to put the legislation on next week, you're certainly or the next meeting, you're certainly not. <laughs> you're, you're not ready for that. You're, you're right. Just I'm, you're not yeah, ready for I, that. I I would probably vote against it. To, to be totally honest, uh, you know. Because uh, I, I just don't see the, the activity there that says, yes, this is viable. We as a group are moving forward. Uh, we've been working on plans. We've been coming up with, with uh, scenarios that we might be able to use to do this, that, or the other. To me, those are the things that why we are waiting <laughs> to determine what we're going to do that they should be doing you know don't don't wait for me to say hey I'm gonna put in a street or whatever 
and now we're going to do something. You know, show me something so that I have confidence that uh, we're going to move forward. And when I say confidence, you know, within the next two to three years, you know, uh, if, if you look at me and you wait uh, five years, I'll be 72 and moving along. <coughs> so, you know, it, it, uh, at that age, I'm probably not going to be thinking about the youth. I'm going to be thinking about myself. And, and not to be facetious and so forth, but, you know, uh, as time drags on and you get older, your priorities change. And we have a community that's getting older and their priorities are going to change. So if we want to tap what we have now, the CBE needs to start moving forward. Um, comments from citizens? Chrissy? <coughs> I'm Chrissy Cruz. I just wanted to comment about the CBE, uh, funding of the CBE, actually. Um, over the last six months, what happened was this Yellow Springs LLC purchased the Creative Memories Building. And I was kind of looking into it because I'm curious, I'm a nosy person, and I wanted to see, well, who is this Yellow Springs LLC? And just in reading articles about the Creative Memories and the CBE project, I noticed that they're both um, represented by the same realtor uh, has been working with the CB property and the Creative Memories property and also uh, an attorney was the same with the two properties and then I noticed in the newspaper um, that they said something about the people that had purchased the Yellow Springs um, Creative Memories building they had they were willing to invest several million dollars into this project that's what it said in the article Diane wrote so I was just wondering, in my mind, I kind of put these together, why, if this company has several million dollars that they were willing to invest in Yellow Springs, um, and they, I don't, I don't have the articles with me, but they were definitely, there were comments made by the same realtor and the same attorney involved with both of these properties. Why would they have not wanted to spend some of that several million dollars on the CBE pro property? Why wouldn't they, if they're developers interested in Yellow Springs and seeing where economic growth could be, that they could put their money, why wouldn't they have maybe wanted to put some of their money into the CBE project, especially with the same realtor and attorney involved, they would have known about both properties. So I'm just pointing that out because that's something that it, went through my it, mind. None of that's true. Okay, well, I saw an article about, I saw an article that they were, that the same attorney and the same it, It's not, it's just not true. There's not, the, the, um, the owners of the CBE are community resources. Well, I know that. No, what I'm saying is that there was, there have been articles by attorney, by realtors that have been working about both these properties. Realtors talk generally about okay. property if development. They, if they were involved with, with the Creative Memories, I'll get the paperwork for you, Karen, because I looked this up and there was the same realtor involved with the Yellow Springs LLC who also made comments in the Dayton paper about the CBE. And I was just thinking, I put them together, why wouldn't they have? Making comments has nothing to do with there being any fiduciary relationship. I mean, it, it, there, there is no, the owners of Creative Memories have no fiduciary, no relationship whatsoever to the Center for Business and Education. There is no connection whatsoever. So the same real estate developers wouldn't have been, wouldn't be offering the CBE property. I mean, you're not, they're not looking for people to build on the CBE Realtors property? will sell anything to anybody. I, <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not aware that Community Resources has a designated attorney or any real estate agent. I don't have an attorney. Okay. They've been working with, they've been talking to Mills Morgan, who is a developer in, in Beaver Creek. And Mills Morgan has had, at one point Mills Morgan looked at Creative Memories um, as potentially when it went on the market, they looked at it to purchase. Maybe that's what you're referring to, but they have no connection. There is no connection between the Center for Business and Education and Yellow Springs LLC. Okay. I, maybe I didn't. Ex oh, I'll get back with you on this because maybe I didn't explain myself correctly. <coughs> mm -hmm. 
Any other comments? Megan? Uh, Megan Bachman uh, with Community Resources. Um, just to your what you're saying, Jerry, about what we've been doing and why we don't have anything to present. You know, this time, essentially, there was a procedural issue that we needed to go back to Planning Commission, so we worked on that. At that time, Council didn't say, okay, when this comes back, we need to have you answering these questions for us. We needed to have these things in place. Um, we haven't heard anything. We'd be happy to respond. There are lots of balls moving. You add community resources with getting a lot of these pieces together. Um, Brian's been involved in some of that. Um, is Roy Qualls still here? He's not mm -hmm. here. Um, so those things are happening. And again, please give us you know the specific needs of what you're what you're looking for, what you're needing. Um, we'd be happy to participate. But uh, I mean, not, nothing's been brought up at any council meeting in the last six months. Six months about this as well. I, I guess my point is, and usually I don't respond to. But, but my point is, don't, don't wait for council to ask questions. You know, CBE move forward with what you want done. We have a small piece of it building the infrastructure, but making the whole project go, that's, that's CBEs and as community resources. Community resources. As, as folks see and hear these things, they have more confidence in the in the project okay uh, you don't have to have a whole lot of confidence in, in me on whether or not I'm gonna fund the infrastructure but the confidence that the program is going to grow the project will grow the community will benefit from it and, and like I say you know <laughs> if, if you wait for me to ask you to do something nothing's going to get done because I'm not going to ask. I want you, the group, and I'm part of that group. Okay, so, you know, I want us as a group to start moving forward and, you know, uh, I, yeah. I think the other issue that's um, involved is the issue of being a designated CIC or what the village wants to do with regards to that because if the village does decide to be involved in this project I mean I see it as a much more collaborative community project so I mean that would be the time for a lot more in community input and community involvement and where a lot of the that piece could come from so I mean there's kind of been a lot of balls in the air and, it, and I'm a little di more direction from council about exactly what is needed before you know that decision is would be really helpful so. yeah and CR is a defense they're a completely volunteer organization with little or no budget so uh, and I don't want to argue but you know to me that's not a defense you know this organization this thing's been in works for for over 10 years and you know uh, I've been on both sides of it, and, and, and I just feel that things are stagnant from, from what I can see, and, you know, uh, and, and tell, you know, we make projections as a council, businesses make projections, they prepare plans and so forth. Uh, but it just appears to me is that things are trying to be thrown at council to say, well, you guys got to do this, that, and the other, and I, I disagree with that. You know, the the CB was <coughs> was set up to to do something, and it's kind of slow right now. So. Sue, and then Catherine, and then I don't know if Dan actually has his hand up or he's just resting it on his head. <laughs> <laughs> Sue Abendroth. I, I can only say how discouraged I am that nothing can happen about the CBE <coughs> because there's a, this is a question and that is a <coughs> question and the other is a question. Is it going to be a designated CIC? Is it going, are we going to pay for the infrastructure? All of these questions are all to my mind, delays. And I think it's time 
or soon will be, for council to be clear with the village and for the village to get a question answered about whether council and the village and village volunteers, et cetera, are, are going to do anything or are we just going to sit and continue to ask questions? Here's the thing. A referendum would be an answer. It's the only answer most of the village would really accept and understand because it's clear. If, the, if this re resolution gets, gets voted in place and you do the paperwork to do the funding, which then opens the door for a referendum, it's the only way there's going to be an answer just like there's, n there's not been an answer for the past 10 years. I think people recognize that we need a, a, a economic development. I think people have invested a fair amount of thought and concern into the CBE and moving it forward. An, an election uh, is one piece of information that we had and people were elected when they voted in favor of supporting the CBE, those candidates were elected. So I think there's an indication that there is a diversity in the village about what to do about the CBE. And to my mind, the only way we can get an answer is to put it to the vote. And the only way I know to get it to the vote is to go through the process that Kent has outlined. And I urge you to do it because that's the way we will know whether this village wants to support a, uh, economic development at the CBE or whether the village won't support it and people will have to do it on their own. It's a fair question. Let's get an answer. Thank you. Thanks, Sue. Catherine? There, oh. there is an alternative to uh, referendum, Sue, and that's initiative. You know, citizens could get together a petition to compel council to fund the CBE and build it. Good point. Thank you. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I have to say that, that um, I think the capacity issue is, is the biggest concern I have. Um, the capacity of the village to, to handle all of these infrastructure projects that we're talking about, a new water plant, um, two major distribution projects, and um, I, am, I am not understanding why when most of the Community Resources Board was here in the beginning of the meeting, they've all left except Megan. Um, and Sue. And, and, it, and Sue's not on. Sue's, and, and knowing that this discussion was going to be on the agenda, um, this was decided when they were all here. I, I'm, I am really disappointed in that um, because I don't, um, I, I'm, I just, don't, I, I don't know that I see, because community resources, whether this, whether this road gets built or not, community resources is the property owner and they're responsible for developing this property. Um, and um, I'm, and they're the ones that have the desire for us to build this road, you know, that have the, that have the most at stake in building this road. The entire community generally, yes, does, but um, it's, it is a collaborative project um, with, between the village and the property owner. Um, I guess what I would <coughs> ask, are we done talking? I, I I'll just say one, you know, I, I, I know what it's like to be on a volunteer board and uh, all the hard work and meetings and and uh, so I really appreciate all the work that has been done by community resources and and for whatever reason um, it seems like things just slow down clearly it happened on the village level because of technicalities that we didn't <laughs> that we didn't follow but uh, uh, Jerry and I were part of this little team of community resources and John was on it also and it was decided that there was going to be a big push by community resources to educate the community dirt and, and take advantage of this downtime and it didn't happen 
at all. And to me, that was another uh, example that, for whatever reason, I think people have gotten tired. And I, I really do think that if this is going to move forward, the village government is going to have to be involved in some way, and presumably by a designated CIC, and some staff time will have to be devoted. So to me, it's not so much, it's more, um, well, it's more about is there the capacity, do we have the capacity in place to move this forward? Uh, and, and, and as well, and, and there are some private citizens, apparently they've been putting money into the community uh, creative memories building. I'd like to see some investors who are at least saying, well, yeah, I'd be interested in being involved in some way. So these are the things that I've, I've been thinking about. So um, I will say that I'm compelled by the argument that we do need to know what the community really wants. And I think if the community does make a decision that we need to focus on something like the CBE, that drives the designated CIC, that drives the economic plan, and it pushes all those things forward to happen. And I understand the argument about capacity, but if that is what the community wants, and we know we need something to change in terms of the tax base and everything else, um, that would motivate me to make those things happen. And I guess that's my argument for following Kent's recommendation and letting the process run. Um, although I, I, I share all the other things that I've heard about, I, I'd love to have all those pieces now, but I do think that those can happen um, if we are given that signal to make them happen. Well, what I would suggest is that is um, someone willing to make a motion that we follow Kent's recommendation to bring financing legislation to the next meeting. Does it really need a motion? I think, I, I guess I feel like I don't want to add a major item to the agenda if council doesn't agree to it. I mean, this if we decide to put that legislation on the agenda, we're going to have a full council chambers and we're going to have an hour-long discussion. I don't want to do that if we don't have a majority of people sitting at this table that wants to do that. I move that uh, Kent bring legislation forward for next week so we can go either up or down. <coughs> so we can either go up or down on it. Second. <coughs> do you want to just do a voice vote on that? Um, yeah, let's, why don't you do that? Real quick. Cool. Can, can I have a point of process? So the purpose of this is to bring it forward so we can vote it up or down. Yes. Yeah. And you, you want a roll call on that? Uh, yeah, you go ahead okay. and do a roll call. House? Yes. Queen? Yes. Sims? Yes. Wintrow? Yes. What's next? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, what's next? Um, next on the agenda, we're in new business. This is all new stuff. Um, Poor Vicki Hennessy has been sitting here for a long time to talk about the mosquito thing, so we'll put her first on the agenda. Okay, I guess I'm up. No, I haven't been to a council meeting for months, not since the new people, so hi. <laughs> yeah, it's been uh, interesting. At any rate, I'm here. Um, you got my proposal. I am submitting, I'm, fr I'm Vicki Hennessy from GEC, Green Environmental Coalition, and um, last year we ran a mosquito project village-wide with Antioch College. Um, the Green Environmental Coalition primarily took, took most of the responsibility for uh, educating the community. We had inserts in the newspaper, lots of articles, letters to the editor. We had uh, handouts at street fair and posters. We, we did stuff at the, at the 5K run. We, we, uh, we went to the block parties. You know, we got the word out about how to, water, how to um, mosquito proof your yard by dumping containers and flapping out tarps and all of those things. And then we worked with um, Antioch College. It turned out there was a, um, a professor, Savitha, um, Krishna, who used to work as a professional um, public 
public health professional in India, and her particular responsibility was working with mosquitoes, trying to eradicate them. So she's over there now, and she started training her students how to work with trapping and catching larvae in the, in the waterways. And um, they went to people's yards on request and went through the whole yard and saw what was causing the excess number of mosquitoes and so forth. So um, this was actually established, this program, because last year the village council voted uh, to contract with our uh, uh, county health um, Department. Green County Department. Combined Health Thank District. Thank you. Um, to only uh, use larvicide, which is a, a safe, biologically safe uh, <coughs> way to kill mosquito larvae, but they can no longer spray pe pesticides, which, which are harmful. And that's why we started this vigorous program to get the village involved in what you can do to get rid of those mosquitoes. And um, it was successful, I think. I think people were really. Uh, Everybody I talked to was really thankful, and people were calling all summer and wanting us out there, and, and, it, and it was, for me, it was a great deal of fun. <laughs> but um, this year, um, we don't have the same funding we did last year. We had um, uh, quite a bit of, of funding come in from Antioch College, which this year is not available. Um, so we're asking the village to support it this year, and um, we're asking for $5,000 of funding, which primarily would go to Antioch students and the professor that runs the show over there, Savita Krishna. Um, most of last year we had twice that much, and we purchased all the equipment that they use, all the dip nets and the, the calculators and so forth. And so this year all that's done, and all the mapping, they did extensive mapping last year um, and, and identified all the bodies of water that hold mosquitoes. So all that's done. So they have much less to do this year. And I guess that's about all I have. Okay, thanks, Vicki. Questions from council? <coughs> yeah, Vicki, <coughs> thanks for all the details on the project. It looks great. Um, first of all, I did want to ask why there is no funding from Antioch College this year. Well, I think um, last year it was, uh, what do they call it, a faculty development grant that, was okay. that Savitha was able to obtain because she was new faculty and they were supporting them. But this year it was much more competitive and they said if you already got one, don't even bother. Okay. So <laughs> and I noticed the uh, Community Foundation was also a funder last year. They were. Did you? I did didn't go to them again. Okay. Quite honestly, I didn't because that process is quite long and Savitha's ready to start this Friday. Right. I didn't realize that or I would have gotten in here before, but that's, mosquitoes are getting bad. I don't know. Right. Have you heard over on Winter Street? Sure. They're, they're really bad over there. So yeah. Anyway. Vicki, do, do you see this as an ongoing project yearly? I think it may come to that. Yeah. Um, I know. Because right. We, and the reason I ask, you know, because we have mosquitoes every year. Yeah. And, you know, are we kind of saying that, you know, this is the way of the future for Yellow Springs as to how we yeah. want to control the mosquitoes? And, and if so, then, you know, I think well, count, council has to kind of look at it. Are we going to budget this every year versus yeah. you have to come coming forward to us each year asking yeah. for money? That's, you know. No, I understand, and, and I think eventually it probably would be a good idea. I mean, I don't think that um, we want to bring back the pesticide spraying, but I think some things that could be done by the village would be perhaps to um, fill in some of the the waterway, the, you know, the ditches along the side of the road that continually hold lots of water. And take a look at things like that. I know there were suggestions last year from the Green County. Uh, health department about which particular areas we could look at it and I really don't think anybody did anything. I, I wonder Ken if that's something that we could um, do is have a staff member work with these folks to, to that's see areas thinking. like that yeah. and maybe at some point it's something that our staff can can take on. Um, that would be good, yeah. I, I like the idea of supporting the college. I mean I really do like the idea of, of helping yeah, with their program. That will be there forever and, probably. Um, <laughs> 
Well, you know, I I guess I have different, you know, it, it, it's a good program, and if we're going to have it, to me, I'd like to see it as a community program versus doing it under the disguise of we're, we're funding a, a college uh, effort each year, and the, the, apparently the college didn't see fit to, to make a part of their curriculum in the future, so, you know. And the students in, listed in the budget are Antioch College students? Yes. So there was also no discussion about trying to have Miller Fellows do this? Well, we had talked about that, but um, we weren't sure what was going to happen. And when right. the deadline was up, which was very early, yeah. um, we didn't get it in in time. But we had actually talked about that for the future. For the future, OK. Yeah, next next season. Mm. I, I think in, in um, Speaking to what, what Jerry said, I, I agree with that, but I, I don't think we're set up for that this year. I think that what I would see is for, is for this to potentially be a transition year to get our staff more involved in what they're doing and, and educated in, in what to do. I don't see how we can suddenly take on this project. We're just not set up. We don't mm -hmm. understand it. Okay, then, then, then I would look at it, and I would agree that to give the money they need as a transition as period. a transition but you know I don't don't want to have to each year come up and determine you know because it's to me we we've kind of made a decision as as the, as council is you know we want organic means to get rid of mosquitoes so you know we gotta kind of take that so that's something for you to put on your list for patty to something like maybe in february or something we start to or or when you guys are finishing up with this program if, if we i think we're going to i'll ask for a motion but that we find a way to transition over to for staff to be more involved john quick comment please I'm fully supportive of the program. I think you've been doing a wonderful job. I just love what's going on. The one caution I have is that, for the most part, when I've seen a community, uh, the government take on a, a great project, the residents then often sit back and have it be that it's going to be staff and government that does the job. And this is a project that a major part of the success of the project, as I understand it, Vicki, is how engaged the citizens were in the things that they could do on their own property. So there is a role for trained people to support the citizens, but without the heavy citizen engagement, it's not going to be a successful <coughs> government program. So as there's a transition, you need to figure out, and, I, and I, I'm not sure about the tree committee, but there's a place where a very strong citizen group supported with funding to continue their work might be actually more powerful and then having maybe a trained staff person to support that group ongoingly. But I, I really urge you to look at alternate mechanisms of how to have that critical civic engagement of all the citizens and what they have to do on their own property for it to be successful. Thanks, John. So Vicki, is that something that we could add um, to you know for, for perhaps this group to look at, at to work with staff on or citizens on some kind of a transition strategy well I'm sure that Savith would be glad to work with you and we would too okay. but um, I think what John said is probably very true but I mean okay people were very excited about you know having students do this work and, mm -hmm. and help them and, and volunteers it was like people helping people okay. it wasn't like just call the government and have them come out right so yeah but yeah I'm sure we'd work with you how, however so does a council member want to make a motion I move that we fund the 5,000 that Vicki needs this year and and also that she looks at a helping us transition uh, with staff help, help in the future whatever that may be second all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. I'd like to suggest to Vicki that instead of killing the mosquitoes, you should re-educate them and direct their efforts <laughs> into more socially acceptable channels. <laughs> that would be the Yellow Springs approach. Um, uh, Brian, you have uh, 
nominations for HRC? I do, and I believe all three are here. So uh, we received uh, resumes and letters of intent from three individuals. Uh, and actually, uh, we, we have three spots to fill on the Human Resource uh, Relations Commission. Um, so I'll just briefly mention, uh, first of all, we um, got an application from Katherine Hitchcock, and I would strongly recommend her. She's uh, become very involved in um, uh, the mental health issues locally, uh, starting the or a co-founder of the NAMI group, and uh, that is definitely an area that we want to focus on. In fact, uh, at a future date when we have more time, we talked about the fact that uh, it disability in general, not just mental or physical, should be part of our um, mission. Uh, so that's something we need to look at. Um, I think maybe I can just talk about all three. Uh, we have Kate Hamilton, uh, who submitted an a extensive resume. Um, one of the things that I'd like to highlight about Kate is that she's really involved with our schools and with our families. and. That's one of the things I know we've talked about as council members, trying to get more participation from that group. Uh, I know it's very hard for them to come to meetings and, and forums and things because of taking care of children. So, uh, but Kate's also been involved in a lot of other things. Uh, she was on the Citizen Advisory Committee for one. And then uh, we just got today on our table uh, Chrissy Cruz's uh, letter. And um, I think everybody knows Chrissy Cruz has been really involved in a lot of issues. Um, I was really excited to get this application as well because one of the issues that we've needed on HRC is some, uh, some new blood, uh, some additional energy. We've got a lot of things going on. And uh, I think our other members definitely welcome that new energy. Uh, so I strongly recommend all three. Well, and I guess I would them? make, uh, <laughs> yes, I would nominate, make a motion that we approve uh, all three uh, additions to the HRC membership. Second. All those in favor, any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Thanks. Uh, um, Marianne, you um, said you wanted to talk about the restroom situation. Yes. Um, I saw a lot of names, uh, a lot of local names on the petition to um, keep the restrooms at the train station open. Um, I, I imagine that the reason that it's closed at night is safety. Con safety concerns both, and maybe I should ask, why is it closed? Why is it locked at night? I would say because it's becoming an alternative homeless shelter and because we're suffering a lot of damage and vandalism when it's open all night. Uh, people stuffing <laughs> rags and clothing into the toilets and um, some things I'd rather not talk about smeared yeah, on the yeah. wall. And, um, uh, Pat, yeah. So it had been open all night at one yeah, point? Yeah, there have been times when it was. It's my understanding. Karen, it's getting... It's there has been vandalism. I don't know if it's ever been open all night. Actually, I think it's open longer hours now than oh. it used to be. I don't think the the difference now is that is that it there are automatic locks on the doors. The PD used to go by and and physically lock and unlock it. So it's very possible that if they missed it, they were busy and they missed it. It did stay open later some nights but I'm not aware that it was it's ever been open 24 hours um, it, it was suggested uh, that uh, that it that the village have some place where someone could use a bathroom um, and the, generally that's been gas stations I mean I rarely uh, when I travel go to a gas station that doesn't have a bathroom neither of our gas stations do and and I think it was Bob Baldwin suggest so, someone suggested to me that the village negotiate with a, one of the, the um, gas stations to maybe pay for the water or something if they would open and cover cleaning and and I think it would be worth investigating something like that I I think it would be worth having a bath yeah, but the, the Bryan Center is open 24 7 <laughs> So, so there are restrooms available to citizens 24/7, and there are 
men's and women's upstairs, and although I think the upstairs the is upstairs closed. Is closed downstairs but is but open. so there are restrooms available. I, I think the private I think that the private property situation is really kind of treading on thin ice because you know is it just gas stations do we do that with other downtown businesses um, I think that's a I mean personally I think it's a responsibility I think they're probably required by code to have them um, and the fact that they choose not to is personal choice they have restrooms they just don't mm -hmm. allow them to be used by the public they're using them uh, restaurants are required to have them by code. I don't know about gas stations. Well, um, it, maybe there could be some signage because I. I That's a thought. That, well. that there are public restrooms. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. it, <coughs> and, and I, I, me personally, I, you know, for that one or two or, or a half a dozen that needs to use them late at night, I'd rather have them coming down here where. It can be monitored versus, you know, uh, because I, I think the issue that we're going to get into is, you know, Sunday or, 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 or Saturday morning <laughs> when we got a lot of uh, activity and our bathrooms are trashed, you know, uh, and, and, and I don't care how good our police officers are. They can't be in all places at, at, at all times. And I, and I think, you know, we would just be opening ourselves up to, to a lot more headaches if we kept those, the train station restrooms open 24-7. But as long as we do have a place here that's open 24-7, I, I think we have accommodated the, uh, the masses. I think that I, I did talk to Green County Parks today because they're involved with all of the bike trails and to see what uh, I found out what Xenia does and, and Beaver Creek. Um, Xenia Station and Beaver Creek Station both open at either 6 or 7. Xenia closes at 7 at night. When summer hits, they stay open two hours later. Beaver Creek stays open till 10. I think Beaver Creeks are locked manually. I, th I think they have a police officer go by and lock theirs. Um, Xenia is the same as ours. They have the automatic. I, you know, I would I would suggest that, but, but the other thing that Chris Bell did say is that with, when summer comes that there are people on the trail, people start to hit the trail at, at five or six o'clock in the morning. So ours, our hours are from seven to 10. Um, I, I would, I would, you know, maybe ask staff to consider: Could we open them in the summer, say, from at six in the morning, and maybe have them open till eleven or twelve at night, a little bit later in the evening in the summer? And again, just summer hours. Um, but I, I don't think that the, I don't think twenty-four-seven is is a good idea. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I could understand that that could be a problem but perhaps at the train station there could be signage saying go to the right yeah that's and a good idea yeah we've actually got signage all over town to go to the train station right. if you have to go to the bathroom but I yeah yeah this added you know after hours it, it was uh, whatever my call would be mm -hmm. okay um, and then the next thing that I added, the Township Association meeting. So Greene County has a Township Association where all, that all the townships are members and actually most of the municipalities. They have monthly meetings. Um, and usually all the Greene County commissioners go, basically all the elected officials in Greene County go, um, and, and almost all of the elected township officials. Um, there is going to be one. The June 12th meeting will be in Yellow Springs. It's going to be at Yellow Springs Brewery. Um, the whole focus is on local food and agriculture and local production. Um, the township is putting in $250. Is that correct, John? I you don't know? Don't know. Um, and the chamber is putting in 100 and I would um, like to request that the village consider putting, um, s contributing $100 to, it's basically the host organization provides food so we'll be providing local food working with um, harvest mobile and um, using as much local produ locally produced food as we can do you need a motion on that I would prefer it 
I move that we provide $100 to the June 12th uh, activities. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And I will get you guys information. So, I mean, I, I think we can, so all, we can all come. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you're there. Yes. Um, Kent, it's time for your report. Well, I'll be real brief. Uh, my last, I mentioned briefly before, cable television franchise. And the village did adopt an ordinance in 2008 saying that uh, we would intend to continue collecting franchise fees from any cable operator. <coughs> so that, I think we're set there. Um, we had a seri seriously bad rainstorm the week before last. Um, a lot of people have asked for help, and frankly, we're just not in a position to provide it. Um, if people do have excess, if, they, if you've had something flooded in your basement, you've got a couch or a chair or something that needs to be discarded, we sell stickers at the utility office, and if you put it out with a sticker on it, Rumpke will take it along with your regular trash. Stickers are a dollar and a quarter a piece. Um, I've had people ask me to regravel their parking lots. <laughs> you know, I, we just can't do that. Is that per <coughs> item, per item? Well, it's it's supposed to be for a, a sixty gallon trash bag, like a yard waste bag. Mm -hmm. So. But uh, yeah, I would say if it was a chair or a couch, that would. No, I'm, I'm, I'm more concerned. But people that have carpet and they usually have to cut it up into to rows. Would they would they need a sticker for each row? Would it cover the whole thing? You probably need to tie it together. Well, but that's what I'm asking. I mean, that's you know, that basically. They weren't done tight. They didn't right. It. <laughs> you know, but so. that's basically what what they do for for the for the big waste hauling for trash week or for pickup week. What are the rules for pickup I, week? I mean, that's essentially the same, we're talking about the yeah, same kind of stuff. Spring cleanup, yeah. Spring so, cleanup, yeah. yeah. Otherwise known as our annual redistribution of wealth festival. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, when you go to get the sticker, they can tell you. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. uh, yeah. I've had to ask them before, and they, they know exactly, or they'll phone Rumkey and find okay. out if, yeah. if you don't know. Um, my original agreement with the 1979 Village Council was that I was not allowed to leave town <laughs> to be But I have to be absent this year because my granddaughter is getting married that day. So I'm hoping uh, we'll know this week whether Tony uh, Pettiford can come back under light duty. And if so, well, I'll ask him to be present and available on that day. Um, and as uh, Melissa mentioned, we are now accepting credit cards for utility payments. Uh, you can do it in person at the window. You can do it over the phone. Very soon we'll be able to accept payments by mail with a credit card form. And eventually it'll be online when we get our new website up and running. Yep. So uh, we're actually coming into the 20th century. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> and that's your hair. That's good. Okay. okay, thank you. Uh, Judy? I've got just it's been a busy few weeks but productive and most of those things we've already talked about and then just a heads up that I'm away on vacation July 24th through August 10th and therefore we'll miss the August 4th council meeting but um, maybe I could get a blow up dummy and <laughs> something anyway I, I'm sure that that can be worked out if the new village manager is willing to read legislation we can we can figure things out okay well I and, can and do it as quickly as you can <laughs> Here's a practice. New, that'll be the new manager, yes. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, uh, future agenda items. Will when will Planning Commission <laughs> do their annual report? <laughs> <laughs> Matt Reed is out of town for a long honking time. I, I mean, I keep trying to schedule it, and he keeps getting called out. And in fact, he's missing the next planning commission meeting I think he may be back for he may be back by the 16th so I'll check and see if he's back okay do, do they actually have to present it or submit it well I think they yeah I mean they're supposed to it would I would I mean that's uh, that's really our most important significant commission I mean I think of all of them we should be but at this point it may be just be too late you know we know what they've been doing they've been rewriting the zoning code that what they did in 2013 was rewrite the zoning code. Right. so it may not be necessary you can maybe we can just let them off the hook this year 
Well, we kind of flipped them off the hook last year. Oh, we did? So well, they were doing the same thing <laughs> last year, weren't they? <laughs> <laughs> it took them two years to do the zone. <laughs> they're too busy working to report on what they're doing. So, so we've what? Well, I just I we've got the second reading of the sewer rate ordinance. We've got the second reading of the utility easement. We've got the second reading of the CBE subdivision. First reading of the CBE funding. Yeah, I I, I know we're going to have a busy meeting, but I would really uh, like to uh, invite uh, Thor Sage from Inveca to talk about all the things that are going on uh, in the region related to municipal broadband. Um, I think it would be a 10 minute talk, but there's a lot of projects happening in Clinton County and Springfield in particular, and they impact a lot of what's happening uh, or could happen in Yellow Springs. I would like to hold that for Patty. Okay. We, we that sounds like a good idea. Wednesday morning to talk about municipal broadband. Right. I mean, this, and I do want to come to that. This, this will be a little bit different, though. This is more about what other communities are doing. Um, I mean, I understand. I, inter I mean, I think it. I think it seems like it will be. I think that's good to have. for not without. Yeah, it's manager. good to have Patty. So I, I'm, I'm on board with that. Okay. So. Oh, and the housing needs assessment. Oh yeah, that's sorry. Thank you. Yes. And uh, will a water report just sort of be an ongoing thing on the yes. water plant? What, well, what? we will have, okay, what, what I said that, that Kent and I will try to put together a timeline. Yeah. Okay, and if you need another council member involved in it. Right, yeah. yeah. Uh, do you want to follow up on the glass farm uh, beavers. issue? Beavers. To beavers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. can this beavers? <laughs> Just let me know when you guys are going to talk about it and I'll come on down, okay? <laughs> what did you say? I just let them know when they were going to talk about that issue so I can be here. I right think, there. I mean, I think I'd, I'd say know, let's leave that to too. staff. Um, and I don't know if, is, is, there, is there a huge emergency about it? I mean, or is that something even that could potentially wait for, for Patty to get here? No, I, mean, this guy no, I don't think there's a, a, I don't think there's a huge emergency because, uh, just removing some of the dam material, I think, a lot apparently can allow the water to flow. Right. It, it's it's more about uh, a long what term. weighing uh, what we could do in the future so that um, the beavers can't. Th there are things you can put in place so that the water flows and the beavers don't dam it up. But the other thing is. Um, can, can that site uh, support increasing beaver population and what you would do with that? That would be an even longer term thing. And, and those are the kinds of longer term discussions that I, I would like to wait for Patty to be involved with. I'd hate to have there be a, a, a discussion that was a long term discussion that she would miss mm -hmm. out on and have to jump in on. Let's wait till she, she signs that contract. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Uh, do you want to bring Sutton Farm? Do you want to bring Sutton Farm? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe. Um, <laughs> Sutton Farm. Jason has information. Do you want to? On the. Oh, the. The, um, the building. Yes. The building. Okay. Um, I think we had a villager that wanted yeah, to. Yeah, go oh, ahead. I'll keep it. Oh, that's. I'm Bettina Solis Dolzenberg, and I live with the Beavers. <laughs> so, yeah, I just. Um, wanted to ask when the village removes a bit of the dam and the flush comes downstream will the downstreamers be notified that's all yeah. good mm -hmm. point that's a good point uh and with our hyper reach we could actually do that mm -hmm. i mean otherwise it's pretty difficult now, is that going to include dan dixon since he's not technically in the village mm -hmm. can't answer that but you can send some beavers down with but, but, but he's been a thorn in our side, so he deserves whatever he gets. No. Oh, my God. <laughs> no. Dan is a personal friend. <laughs> <laughs> and um, one thing I... I Sutton Farm, okay. Yeah, sorry. One thing I just want to keep on our radar is uh, this thought bubble idea, because I feel like a lot of the projects that Mary Ann brought up today, um, Ellis Park are all things where uh, this may be beneficial to us. And uh, I know you've seen it, Karen. Um, uh, 
it'd be really good to find a way for everybody, every council member, just to see what it does first. But what's so what that again? Uh, thought bubble? Um, and what it does is uh, actually Matthew Kirk, who has founded this and he lives in town now, oh. has offered uh, the village to use it for free to be one of their like first triers, and and that would continue in the future. And so you focus on places like Ellis Park and basically get feedback on some of these longer term projects. So the beavers could be an issue as well. If we, I think if we, if we bring it back, I, I mean, I, I feel like our major project right now um, with that kind of communication is the website. I, I, I hesitate to start another big project. And I realize it's not specifically our project when the website isn't, isn't done. Um, but I would also like to hear a proposal about how it gets managed. Who's managing this information? Who's responding? And um, who's who's taking it and using it? I mean, it's not right. something we can. How how is staff going to interact? I mean, are we going to see? Is council going to see stuff that we're going to then take to staff? We can't expect staff to be monitoring this right. website. So if and when we I will say when we bring it back if that's if that's something that you could have developed about how it's really going to be managed right I would appreciate that yeah and I think uh, yeah I think when we're when we have some time as so I just want to keep it on our radar Okay. Um, I just want Ellis Park just came up and Kent and Jason and I had gone to Ellis Park and we had talked about a pretty simple solution regarding pass pass through what would need to happen in order for that to just be implemented I mean does council need to say that or do you can you just tell Jason to do it or do we need to think about it more it's I've got one other option I want to explore I found modular wooden bridges that I think I could make the, the longest one is 20 feet and we need to span 60 but there's no reason we can't put concrete supports at 20 foot intervals mm -hmm. So okay. I'd like to look at that. Okay. And I will say uh, we haven't had a chance to report out about our count, our commissions, but the Public Art Commission did have a lengthy discussion about it. Kent was there, um, and there were some good concerns, or you know, solid concerns about why we might not want to go that simple route. So, so I think we do have to talk about it. Okay. Okay. Um, I would entertain a motion uh, to go into executive session for the purpose of discussion of current and pending litigation with our solicitor present. So moved. Second. Do we have a five minute break? Winchrow. Yes. Sims. Yes. House. Yes. McQueen. Yes. 